We're good. My little my little meters are bobbing up and down, so we should be good. How are y'all doing in the chat? You guys up, awake, ready for another live stream tint job? Ready to kick some ass today with not our biggest job yet, but our I think our biggest job on stream. And ready. Oh shit, I totally forgot. Whoa! I gotta actually adjust this camera a little bit. Maybe. Are we good? I don't know. Sometimes it's tough to tell. Let me, uh, let me see if I can do something here real quick. See that? See that 3.2? No, we're gonna, we're gonna widen that to four. <gasps> it's 30. We gotta change that to 60. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that's why. That's why it would be way weird at 3.8. Let's check, uh, I think we're good. Let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at four. How y'all doing? You guys doing good? What's up, Tim? Tim Pro? Matt Reeves? Uh, Alex, and Auto Spa, Nevin, Diamond, good morning from Chicago. You know, I like Chicago. Chicago's nice, but it's no warmer than here. <laughs> hey Matt, have one at 11, Nissan Maxima with carbon. Very nice. 220. It's good. Hell yeah. Another carbon job. That's sweet. I have a full carbon job tomorrow. Damn. We got a few carbons in the, in the chat. That's really cool to hear. I'm excited. I'm excited for this one. I already got a few phone calls this morning asking about either availability today, um, tomorrow, Saturday. So I have a couple of appointments, but... I don't know. I get right now the way that the Facebook leads have been going versus the way the way the phone calls are. I'm I'm more inclined to like fucking disconnect my phone from Google just so I can have my better presentation on Facebook. But we'll see. We'll see how upselling goes. 
Because sometimes it just seems like when you get them through this little path, or you know, you can better explain your business over the internet than on phone. It's too much over the phone. How many cars? Um, I have just this one, and I have a set of doors coming in. I did that purposefully, though. I had somebody ask me about today. I just, you know, when, when I have the opportunity for a full car with a full windshield, and I can live stream the whole thing, fucking clear out the day. So we're going to be spending a little while on this one. I got my coffee. I got a full thing of coffee. We're going to power through this one. We got to flip it around for the windshield. Hopefully that'll go good. <laughs> Which is better, carbon or ceramic? Um, ceramic's going to be the upgrade. Um, here, it's, it's not as compelling. And that's usually because we have six months of winter. So in Florida, carbon, you know, window tints, just much more common, so much more competitive. Um, but also people, you know, in the heat see the <laughs> a significant improvement with, uh, with ceramic over carbon. But we're still doing, we're doing uh, five actually on this one. So he's going dark with 35 on the shield. So he's going to get some, uh, some added shade to help with, uh, with the carbon for sure. Weather is bipolar as hell here. Yeah, in Chicago. <laughs> Dude, it's, yep, same shit here. It's, it's just up and down. I mean, we, we were running in, you know, April, it starts to warm up. And then all of a sudden we have that, like, sometimes one week, sometimes a couple weeks of just like, fuck you weather where it just dives back down and starts snowing again. And it, it's still, it's taken a while to warm back up. So we're climbing back up out of the cold. It's getting a little bit nicer, which is good. I mean, it's a great time to really start tinning out of here. Um, I have a heater, but you know, at least I'm not having to deal with the cold cold because when I got to do a full size truck, the, the bed's got to stick out the back. Greetings from Veracruz, Mexico. You're a pro. Oh, thanks, dude. Welcome. Hey, Adam. So there's not going to be... I'm still waking up. There's not going to be a ton different between this car and the uh, CT, CT6 that I did. Most of the seals are pretty identical. Back window, like, the whole thing's extremely similar but the added bonus is we are doing the windshield so i had thought maybe we should just do uh the windshield instead of the full thing with the windshield but hey i don't know i got this groovy little setup so we're gonna use it watching and learning that's how to do it and then go practice. <sighs> it's kind of funny. I don't know, just trying to wake up right now. Some mornings are easier than others, but it is really interesting, literally coming out to the garage and I have a full car here to do and a live stream and I don't have to go anywhere, it's so nice too. Same with trucks in my garage, stick out the back and freeze my hands off. <laughs> I used to tent for uh, a couple of different places. One of them, it, they could barely squeak in depending on the size of the truck. But yeah, they, you know, it didn't matter how much snow was on the ground. Dude, they'd still pull them in. And the worst is like the drainage sucked. So you have water. Uh, you're, you're walking through like this much water as the snow pours off the truck and then slowly melts over time. And then on top of that, for some reason, they didn't make the bays wide enough to open the doors either. So you're just cramped the whole time. It's cold, it's uncomfortable, and it, it's just a big pain in the ass. Like this garage is way wider than that than that bay. The, the other one was a little bit deeper, but still, this, more space. More space, more better. Perfect timing, lunch break at work, nice. Lunch break already? Bro, it's 10. How, how early were you up? Unless you're in a different time zone, that makes more sense. 
But yeah, we have this beautiful XDS here. Bam. You know, I have a problem with this. This camera is not wide enough <laughs> for cards this long. It's so big. It takes up, let's see, from there all the way butt up against the garage. So I barely, I don't have that much room to walk back and forth. <laughs> it's just funny. How much do you normally charge to remove tint? Patrick said four ninety nine. <laughs> well, the difference between removals here and Florida is is a lot. Um, I I've been a little lenient. It depends on the customer and it depends on the situation. So just getting my foot in the door right now, if they're getting the full car done, um, I gave it to them at a discount because it's like removal by itself here is typically like 160 bucks, 200 maybe if it's really bad, but most people aren't gonna pay much more than that. So when he's throwing out a number like 500, he's just trying to scare away a person because he doesn't want to deal with it. Um, but usually the way that Florida bakes tint um, I actually had a, an Audi wagon we live streamed, but I didn't live stream the removal. The removal, the removal by itself took me two hours. So, yeah, I would charge more for that. But my dumbass just quoted before I even looked at the looked at the car, and when he pulled in, I saw Florida plate on it. He's like, "Yeah, I got it from Florida, and I need it retinted." I was like, "Oh no, I thought you just had older tint. I didn't know it was Florida baked." So. Depends on the situation. A lot of people will charge either by the hour. Flat rate is, you know, there's only so much that you're gonna be able to get out of it. But you have no cost in it, it's just labor. Figure it's gonna take you for a full car at least an hour to an hour and a half to, to remove everything if it's really bad. Sometimes you can get lucky, but I don't know. In this area, we usually charge a little bit more for tint in general, and most people aren't over 200. But yeah, totally get pricing it out of wanting to do it, period. I was surprised I got a couple so fast, though. That was weird. Hello from Croatia. Welcome. Welcome to Michigan, where the garage is already starting to chill a little bit. Where are we at? We're at 50... We're at like 50 degrees right now. So it's not too bad. It's like starting to warm up. All right, so you guys ready to get started? I have everything all set up, ready to go. So we might as well, um, might as well power through this one. Let's see, do I have, I think I gotta change my blades out. Gotta get some films, wipe down the windows. I haven't touched it. I just opened up the doors, let it warm up a little bit. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to be ready to go here. How's Twitch doing? <laughs> I never, I never checked Twitch. I just checked Twitch. I just thought it was funny. I still get chat from Twitch, but all right, let's, uh, let's grab some stuff and let's get going. Let's make some money today. So we got the GoPro, clock starting. I should use, I wonder if I should put on some stream music. All right, y'all ready for this? The beautiful GoPro look. Oh, it's fantastic, fantastic. Let's go. There we go. Neat. All right, so we have some stuff set up a little bit, but we need to change out some blades. My blades are getting really dull, even in the boxes. It's really annoying, actually, because I'm almost out. So tomorrow I'm gonna have to make some time to run and get some. Because they're starting to overcharge for these a little bit. 
They used to only charge like 20 bucks on Amazon, if not a little cheaper. They're up to like $26 now. I mean, it could be imports right now that could have affected things, but definitely need some more. Okay, so these towels are actually used from yesterday. As you can see, we got lots of blades that we need to do something with. So we're just gonna put these in a little pile over here, and then we'll take care of those later. Oh, I need my floor. I really need my floor. These are all clean. I gotta point out these floor mats too. These are some of the fanciest looking Cadillac floor mats I've ever seen. I didn't even put my feet on the ground when I got in here. Look at those things. I couldn't, I opened the door, I was like, oh damn, they're clean. So you can be, you can be damn sure we're gonna be covering up panels and stuff. We have as much time as we need on this one to make it look right. So that's what we're gonna do. sip some coffee in between. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and prep this back window, give it time to dry. We do yesterday how to Civic with the glass you have on the wall, so hard to do. Yeah, I haven't had one. I had some inquiries about a Honda Civic Type R, and I was like, ooh, if I'm gonna do that, on stream, I sure as hell don't want to try and take the whole thing apart. And it's one of those cars that, yeah, they're, they're not super, they're not super fun. So, I don't know, it was, it was relatively inexpensive for me to buy, so I just bought one. I wanted to put some glass on the wall anyways. And I don't know, everybody's got a flat glass board and you know, it, it's great for cutting out off of a plotter, but we're not using plotters here. So why not a curved one? <clears throat> Is stainless steel ball lock worth? Is uh, what was it? Yeah, they're not expensive anymore. That one was like 160 for me to buy. I think when they first came out, some people got quoted like $400 for it, but they're sure as hell not that expensive anymore, especially with the aftermarket makers. That's all you need. Is the stainless steel ball lock for the pressure tank worth buying? Still using plastic one for the hose connection? Um, you don't need it. 
Um, I actually live not too far away from the tink keg makers. So uh, they've like outfitted me with like the hose and like some different fittings and stuff like that. So these ones, this was a little bit of a special deal that he was working on. So this has a swivel connected here as well as going straight into the ball lock. Um, I would just keep a spare. The plastic ones, I didn't have a problem with. I actually still have my uh, plastic one right here. These ones, they're still good. As far as I know, the quality ones are made in Germany. So those are, those are definitely good for you. But yeah, you, you don't need the plastic, uh, just it, probably worries you like it worried me if it cracks or something just keep a spare one on hand just have a couple of backup parts for it in case something breaks just got the back window oh no that was for the civic i bought a tank keg last night <laughs> nice the uh they're great they're great systems um i used to have the one with the curly hose this was before anybody was uh working on making you know custom kegs and shit like that I I don't know as soon as I saw them I fell in love with them they're great you just have so much more water <laughs> and and pressure that you can deal with you don't have to constantly pump up a bottle you can just you know drag the hose around sometimes it gets a little cumbersome you know trying to manage 25, 30 feet of hose. But if you have like one spot that you can leave it, um, that's like 25 to 30 feet is really what you need to get around most cars without having to like move the tank. The, the ones with like the curly hose, I would always carry them around and it's not bad because you're not really necessarily tangling up cords and stuff like that, but They're, uh, I like the longer hose for sure. Once you get it set up, I hate like coiling it up and, and whatever else. All right. So we should probably get started then, huh? So we're doing five. I have to remind myself that. Because I'm so used to doing 20. Aw. Tracy, with a $3 super chat. Bro, thanks. I really appreciate that. Getting things started right off with a... Ooh, look at that notification. That's awesome. Thank you. No message? No message. Um, would love to... <laughs> so this is like the tech side of me. There's ways that you can get super chats to interact with your environment with different smart devices and stuff. I would love to try and figure out something to like make lights flash or something like that. It would be crazy. But I don't know what that is yet. So I'm just gonna get this all set. Nothing like a full roll. Oh, it's heavy. It's so heavy. All right, and we're limo. Where's my end right there? GeoShields does not have much static on this carbon. So like when you're trying to handle a full roll, ooh, it wants to slide. <laughs> <laughs> Getting through the first 25 feet is always the most difficult when you're trying to just unroll it right on the car. Some film rolls will uh, hold together much better. Because they have like a little 
A little bit of static is always nice. Just for film handling. But if I was pulling it off of a shelf, it doesn't matter. Or I guess running it through a plotter too. That would actually make it better. <laughs> All right. Let's use this one. Best plotter software um, that I've encountered, it's been Xbells. Good luck, though. I haven't been, I don't know. I, I've always been let down. It's been like one of my biggest frustrations. They put a lot of work into Xbells, and it shows. They, they were like some of the first patterns that I really could like trust and rely on. Um, True Cut by uh, SunTech. Not many people know of theirs. Theirs was like second best, I think, or from what I used. Solar Guards was, was decent. Um, and then just like Tint Tech and Film and Vinyl. I, I never had, I, I had so many inconsistencies. You really like, I mean, that's, that's, that's a big reason why I still hand cut is, uh, you know, cause it'd be great to like, you know, just let it off of a machine and have everything line up and never have to like worry about cutting in a car or doing that. Well, the issue is all the little things and you don't know if the patterns work until it's installed. So you've like, you've already wasted your time. So I have to cut the film. I have to load the film in the pl plotter. I have to cut the film. I have to weed it. I have to shrink it. I have to clean the glass. And then when I go to install it, and then if one of the edges is short or the top edge doesn't line up, then you're fucked. And you got to cut your own and start all over again. So that's, <laughs> that's my gripes. There's too many inconsistencies. They're great production machines, and when you take the time to learn your own software, um, they can be better. But you have to like basically learn which patterns don't line up and adjust them accordingly on the fly. I don't know. Never, never been a hundred percent happy with the, with a plotter system, and then the plotter fucks up and or billing fucks up or, you know, number of things. And no matter what, I'm not gonna be that clean of an edge. What was that question? There was a good question there. What do I think of, I had a cancellation so I get to tune in today. Well, that's a, uh, there's the silver lining right there. I got a sample roll of GeoShield ceramic. It's kind of thick for my liking. How is the carbon in comparison? It's not as thick. The, I use 3M software, same issues. Yeah, oh God, gonna get me on a plotter rant. Um, you're right, it's, uh, it's actually their ceramics at two mil, but it, uh, it shrinks incredibly fast. <laughs> so like, as far as feel and handling, I didn't really have much of an issue with them. It definitely has like a little bit of a different feel though. But I've come from using like, uh, what was it? Um, like sur or some carbons where they're like extra rubbery and shit. So I've used just a variety of stuff. But you know, when, when you're talking about installing ceramic, I get less picky on, you know, how quick it shrinks, how, 
how it feels in comparison to other films and stuff like that because the job is just so much more expensive. The thickness is weird compared to Manico. Yeah, it's just, it's a, they'll tell you it's a two mil film. But, you know, as long as that doesn't, ooh, I don't want to do that. As long as that doesn't make it uh, incredibly difficult to install, I don't know. You, you're getting a lot more for it. So the more expensive it gets, the less picky I get, I guess, as far as like sheer installation. I used to though, I used to be like anything like, so I started out with using Lumar um, at my dad's shop and then I started shrinking some other films and I'd always criticize films for not shrinking quickly or feeling different or whatever. Um, but like <laughs> it, it really wasn't, definitely wasn't a fair comparison when you're talking about going from like a ATC dyed to like then a carbon. It's apples and oranges for sure. No cancellations for me. Got a Durango for Avery Nano Ceramic on the front too. And a ceramic detail spray, listening and watching and working. Nice. Yeah, I always leave shit like this on in the background. How do you like, uh, I, I gotta ask you, Diamond, how do you like Avery's uh, ceramic? I actually have not even touched it. Don't drop the roll. Yeah, try not to. I bought a six. 6M roll of tint today to retint my car. Spent 15 on it. Hopefully it will it will be hopefully it won't be too bad. A 6M? You mean a 3M? Or did you find like the sequel to 3M? <laughs> two two layers of 3M equals 6M. Or I guess that's six mil film. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna drop the roll. Oh, six meters. That makes way more sense. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about brands, so that was confusing. What was that? This is my third sample roll, and I can't find anything that installs and feels as good. I got some cool view ceramic and transitioning to try out. Nice. I, cool view is one of those companies that I know nothing about. It's just like, it's always struck me as a weird name. And I just, I, I honestly know nothing about the company. They're like one of those companies that have always like skated by without like me realizing, like looking into them at all. There's some chill dudes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like that. That's the way to sell window film. Just be some chill dudes. There's so many companies, it's hard to keep up with. What's the width? Oh, I almost thought I scratched this. Ooh, that was a water line. Freak me out. Uh, yeah, it's just bright white. No, nope, it's a water. Okay, cool. Uh, this is a 40. So if you can tell, I, I usually leave my 36s just over 
and then the film will almost line up identically. But because I'm using a 40, I got like that much extra at the top. I absolutely love the nano ceramic worth every penny. Thicker than the HP Pro, but but the same as the NR Pro, but better protection, easy to work with and beautiful. Oh, nice. Well, glad to hear it. Some people talk about specs and know nothing about installing it. it makes it hard to decide. Yeah. Yeah, when it comes down to it, like definitely got to pick a film that makes sense for you as far as installation. Um, that's where I'm a lot more critical on like NR, um, less expensive stuff. Because if that can speed me up for sure. But if somebody's paying more, I'm less critical because I'll be more than happy to spend a little more time on it. Um, but then like specs is always annoying because you have like different, you have a whole spectrum of light and they can measure um, any anywhere on that spectrum that they want to and skew their numbers a little bit to make it look like their film is better than anybody else's. And that's, that's where it's like even gets hard to explain it to people. So really, best way to tell, just fucking give it to a picky person and then put it on your own car and drive around with it. A lot of them get so similar, it doesn't even matter. But. Then there's, what is the company? What are they gonna do for you as far as issues and customer service and all that shit. I finally pieced the tank together off Amazon stuff, old air hose, and I, and I don't know. Oh, and I don't know how I went this long without a tank. <laughs> yeah, man. They're, they're a world of difference. I know they're like, it's, they are an investment compared to like, a trigger sprayer, right? You can just go buy a trigger or pump sprayer for under 20 bucks. And they'll last you a long time. Like the Wagner heat guns, right? You can go buy a heat gun for 20 bucks. Why do I need to spend um, three, you know, 250, 300, fuck, even 400 on like a, on a spray tank. So definitely a difference, but man, they're 100% worth it. And they're gonna last for fucking ever too. That's the thing I don't know if <laughs> some people really realize. I mean, you use it on, when you use it on every car, and it's it's just definitely gonna last you years. Like this one, this is one that I'm using right now. I got, I, I bought it off of 44 back in 2013, 2014 at this point. Upgraded the brass sprayer. Like I've changed out the hose because we didn't have like the brass sprayers at the time. We had plastic ones. Those would break. But the brass one, I actually just had one little piece break and all I had to do was change the end. And that was really because I drop it all the time. Have you tried Avery NR Pro? Yes. Yeah, I used to install it for a while. Um, 
It's a good film. This was before they had Avery NR. And the thing I don't like about the NR Pro is the haze. So you get a little bit of haze when you pull it outside and it's like a mid-grade upgrade type of deal. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like trying to sell people into something that's gonna give them a little bit of a haze from like, you know, NR's fine. There's no carbon in it. And then just like, it's a dyed carbon hybrid. So it, it wasn't supposed to have much haze at all. But when you put it on some front doors and you pull it out, you can definitely see a difference between the front and the back. And that's what I really didn't like. So I stuck with, I got the NR as soon as it came out and I was using that. Another Cadillac? Yeah, very similar to the other one. But it's awesome because we're going to be doing the windshield on this one too. They're both, they're both getting full carbon. What kind of Tint Depot film do I use? Um, I don't for the most part. The ones that I'd recommend though is the Superior Charcoal. Um, I use all their tools and will definitely 100% recommend the films that they carry. They carry good films. There's nothing wrong with the films that they carry. The reason I don't use their films is I like, it's, it's the branding. <laughs> I've talked to them about this too, and it's not like, I don't know. It feels like a little cheap of a branding for the film that they sell. So when I'm trying to, like when I want to, if I'm trying to sell it to my customers and I want to give them actual information about the films that I'm using, I want to send them to a place where it <laughs> doesn't look like a retail store website. So um, good company, good films. If you want to buy them and use them on your customer cars or your own car, you're, you're not going to go wrong. There's a lot of people in chat that know where some of their films come from and they can vouch for it. Um, it my, my only, only disagreement is the branding. It sounds a little bit too much like Home Depot. So like, you don't, you know, you can buy a $5 bucket, a Home Depot bucket from Home Depot, but you're, you're not buying like you know, your floor tiles aren't Home Depot brand. So, for those reasons, I'm out. <laughs> How do I get GeoShield film? Uh, go to their site and talk to them. You can set up a dealer account through them. Um, they work with small people, but Ordering GeoShield is not the same as ordering from Tint Depot. Tint Depot is a retail facing website. You can get film anytime you want. Uh, GeoShield, they're a more traditional company, film company, more established um, in those regards. They're 100% they're for, uh, for the dealers. But yeah, their website, uh, geoshieldusa.com, is where you can start learning about and checking out their film. I got links in the, in the description if you want to check them out. What is the difference in reflective and non-reflective? Well, that's it. That's it right there. <laughs> One is literally reflective, so more mirror-like, and non-reflective is non-reflective. So it's just dark or colored. So your HP films, high performance, that's 
um, traditionally metal metalized film. But the non-reflective, which is an ugly name, by the way. Everybody's like Avery NR. It's like they, so when they were owned by Hanita, they used to have a cool name, Sigma and uh, Sigma Pro for their film. I always liked that, but now they're just Avery Denison NR in a brown box. And it lost some of its charm and personality. Still a great film. But like, here's, here's the, uh, the small little difference for me. And it's not like, it's not a deal breaker and it shouldn't be a deal breaker for most people. But you see how I have lovely pretty boxes all, all along the wall? It's like a detail like that. You know, when a, when a customer comes in here and they see just like a wall of film with pretty boxes, it shows, it shows a level of care that you're not necessarily gonna see everywhere else. It's just a small thing that can make an impact. So anything that I can do like that, I'm gonna do. So my next thing is the floor. We got the floor coming. I need it. The order is in. It's gonna take, hopefully it'll be here next week. And then I'm, I gotta try and install it. So I couldn't even tell you if, <laughs> I, I'm sure it's not 100% the reason why I got a job like this, but I mean, very early on, I'm getting cars that I really didn't think that I would get yet. So it's nice, it's nice to see. Oh, I'm getting a race deck floor. We're going with like a black border with a bright green stripe, stripe border and then dark gray in the middle. It'll be fucking sweet. It's like a $1,800 floor that we're gonna be putting in here. Like Jesus fucking Christ. If that doesn't show you how serious I am about my own business. <laughs> Nothing does. Have I done a two-door Mercedes? Yeah, I've done them. The, like, the CTSVs, the CTSV coupes. Tinning the back glass on those is like tinning a sunroof. They're not hard to shrink, but man, they're annoying to carry in. They give you, like, no space. Is Star Tech, is good film Star, you mean Sun Tech? How much does a film you use usually cost? Um, the carbon, the carbon is uh, 300 bucks for like a 40 inch roll. You're gonna love the race deck floor. Oh yeah. Especially like, you know, you got water dripping. Like, okay, so this floor, I was thinking about just patching up the cracks and epoxying the whole thing. And then I started looking into other people's experiences with it. Some people did very well and they said they didn't have any issues. And then I started to see like a 50-50 split between some people. They said they acid etched their, their, their floor, they power washed it, they let it dry, they epoxied it. And then within six months it started to crack and flake. And I'm gonna have cars in and out and I can't have that. So, Race deck is something that I can also take with me. Um, yeah, I'm excited. It looks fucking sweet. It like it goes it goes with the theme of the studio so well too that I, I just like all right, fuck it, I have to. And every single one of my pictures, I'm looking at the floor and I'm like, God damn, I want to change it out so bad. It's what really to me one of the big things that makes it feel still like a like a garage, and we can kick it up a notch. 
Have I heard of ProTech? They have relatively, have I heard of ProTech? They have relatively cheap film, but quality. Well, how do you know? I, just out of curiosity, other than the salespeople talking to you and the, the films that they showed you, like that's always, every, every film company has quote unquote quality film. Nobody, nobody is ever selling you a bad film. They'll never tell you it's a bad film. So, no, I haven't heard of them. Um, but, like, have you heard other people talk about them or all the same reasons I went with Race Deck? Oh, that's awesome. Ooh, it, for before and after photos, post them uh, in the Facebook group. The Tint Stuff Facebook group. That'll be the best place. I Right now I have too many direct messages. Um, and then I gotta change out the insulation on this wall. I'm just gonna get new white insulation. And I might coat it in something. I was looking at like some wood paneling and stuff. Um, so I actually put my, uh, what did I do? I actually put, um, what I'm trying to think. I put it in Photoshop. So I took a picture, put it in Photoshop, Photoshopped uh, some wood grain on the walls, tried some different colors, and I'm not sure if I want to do anything. White seems to look the best. So I think I'm just going to get new white insulation and then get rid of all that shit. And that way it's like nice and fresh looking. Still got to organize these shelves a little bit. They're a little messy. Next fill or global? Um, do, uh, what do I gotta say? I'd go with global. Next fills, uh, I don't know. They're, they're a manufacturer. They make a lot of different types of films. Um, but I've heard you can buy like the cheapest of cheap films from them. Global's always got this really, really good rep. We're gonna check this over. Oh, my phone, you just disrupted my headset. Uh-oh. I missed a call for the studio. <laughs> Damn, I'm in a live stream. See, what am I supposed to do about phone calls? Where did I get my raised garage floor from? What? I have a raised deck floor coming. I don't, other than that, I didn't do anything special. Where the hell can I find 27% film? Because a lot of my customers want it, but don't know where to get it. You're kind of splitting hairs on 27%. What you're gonna want is 30. Um, 30 is gonna be the closest, but when you put it on the glass, it's gonna meter differently. So. Either uh, either 35 or 30 is the closest you can get. You're never going to be able to split hairs that, that close on 27. Nobody else is looking for it is the problem. And uh, I don't know. The interesting thing about customers, customers asking... Oh, go to their website, just racedeck.com, I think. I ordered it direct from Racedeck. What percentage is the film? We're, we're doing dark. We're doing 5% on the sides and we're doing 35 on the shield. We're doing all carbon. How much do I have? Oh, I still got a, quite a bit. Cool.
I don't mean to miss phone calls for people getting inquiries about window tint, but I, I, I might just disconnect my phone. <laughs> I don't know what to do. It's one of those things where it's like, I'm already booked up. I, I honestly am not going to be taking that many appointments, period. There is a coating on this door panel. God, you need all the sticky you can, because whatever is on here, it does not want to stay. That is a, a Civic, Civic Type R back window. And we have not had a Civic Type R. So I really need one in here to uh, pay for that <laughs> in time and in viewership. I got 35 on my car at the moment, going to retain it next week with five. Oh, got the darkness bug, huh? I used to do that. I used to go darker and darker and darker. I settled out with like 20 to basically like 20%. How many... How many film types should you carry? Um, it depends. I think there's, there's a couple, a couple of ideas. There's a, there's a couple, ooh, how do I handle customers that don't show up? I'll get to that one next. Um, there's a couple ways to handle your inventory though. Um, what I thought was kind of a cool way to do it um, was actually carry very few shades in your entry level film. So like you could do a 5, 20, 35. And then if somebody wants to get 15, carry more shades in an upgrade. So like carbon, carry a handful more shades and give them a couple more options. But by and large, more shades adds more confusion to the customer because they can't see it. And it's, you know, it's a little bit tricky. So, like, it's a little tricky if you're just standing out there with a customer talking about it. Um, you can use 20% as a reference, and that's usually the easiest to do. But when, when they're, like, trying to stand out there and decide between 15 and 20%, there's no difference. You can put them side by side and barely tell any type of difference. And when it's on the car, a customer will swear you put the same thing. Like, if you did 50, 20 on the front and 15 on the back, the customer won't be able to tell a difference. I've, I've gotten to discussions with customers about that years ago. So limit the options just to try to narrow things down for them, but carry what is most in demand. So I like 5, 20, and 35 with some lighter options too, but most people either want really dark, middle, or lighter. That's, that's, that's most people. And that really came from like being mobile too. You know, I got to carry a full stock with a couple different variants in my car. Roll sizes and whatever. In a, in a physical space, it's a little bit easier. Um, but there was a good question. Somebody asked, how do you deal with customers that don't show up? Um, that, that is, there's no clear-cut answer for that. Um, it's good to have contingency plans. And it can be hard to ask for deposits. Like right now, I have two people that called and have times booked. Um, one for Saturday and one for uh, tomorrow morning, actually. But the one tomorrow morning didn't necessarily sound the most confidence inspiring. Um, so what I would do in that case is maybe ask for a deposit and set up an easy way for them to leave a deposit. That's, but when you do that, you whittle out a particular type of client too as well. Because like this guy, he's coming in for like a $400 job and you wanna have faith in the customer but you don't wanna set yourself up for failure. So 
set yourself up, I'd say like an easy portal on your own website for a customer to leave a deposit on a job. And that way, you know, um, you know, he's going to come in or at least you're going to have a little bit for the frustration of him not showing up. Am I going live Saturday? Uh, yeah, if I got anytime I got people. Oh God, come on, come on. We freeze. There we go. Um, so yeah, just have some sort of contingency plan. You can try and stack things a little closer together. For me, it's actually especially disconcerting right now because uh, like this guy, I, I was like 99% sure he was coming in, but then it got to like nine, like he was supposed to come in at nine and showed up a little bit later than that. And it's that little like, oh God, I hope he's really coming in or, or else I have literally my whole day blocked off for him. So I don't know. For me, it's a little bit more disconcerting. Uh, we're out of we're out of the home garage right now. I saw some, <laughs> uh, I saw some guy uh, using something called what did he say? I want to read this. I want to read this one right. Um, I watched a video here yesterday, and there's guys saying he had some tint aid. Uh, look alike saying it was 3M and they were making that, not copying you. Um, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's not, and they don't have it. I looked into that because some people brought it up before. It's, um, the stuff that I carry is not 3M, and 3M does not actually make anything that's like this. So he was referring to... 3M pinstriping, and that's what he bought, which is um, kind of dumb. It's not, it's not as thick. It's only, they, the vinyl that they make is only up to five or six mil. Um, so there'll be people that'll look at it and think that it's no different than pinstriping, but it's much thicker than that. So definitely not the same. 3M is not uh, manufacturing a competitor. Nobody's manufacturing a competitor at this point. Um, and it's just somebody's talking out of his ass. So that's all I'll say about it. I almost forgot about that one. This window was sticky on the sides. It kept binding up. We had some struggles, but we should be good. Claire from the BA Test Kitchen is here, or the BA Tank Kitchen. Hell yeah, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for helping out with that Discord bot, by the way. As you can see, I haven't done much with it in the past couple days, but... I think I'm going to open up the voice channel in the beginning, and then just enable anybody to join. And then we'll figure things out as we get going. I just, I wish there was a way to listen to the Discord without actually, like, be in the Discord voice channel, necessarily. But setting up on Discord is a little bit of a, like, it, it seemed like the only platform that where this made sense. Where everybody's on the same page and anybody could join and talk. And I can, like, literally be at my other account and work and just answer questions. Because I, I get too many fucking messages right now. 
I get way too many messages and I can't, I wish I could get to them, but I don't have the time. But then I have customer messages. And it's like, holy shit. Cool. How often do you accidentally crease tint? Uh, not near, not near that often anymore. It happens on occasion. I used to get these little pull creases right here and right here. That was always really annoying when that happened. But, you know, it still can happen. The longer you do it, the less of those issues you're going to have. You just got to stick to it. Bro, I had a customer say I broke his inside door latch, but I seen it was loose. Didn't think nothing of it, so he's he's talking talking what? Oh, I see. Sorry. Um, had a guy say you broke the inside of his door latch. Um, here's the shitty part about automotive um, retail customers. Um, when you notice things that look out of the ordinary, you have to bring it up to the customer, even if you don't think it's a big deal. Um, anything that kind of stands out can be a potential issue. So, like, uh, like that door latch, I know it can be a pain in the ass to, like, notify them, but... Like, you just have to. Or you always run that risk, and, like, if you want to deal with it, you can. But, like, you, you won't... It's not going to be an issue until all of a sudden it, it's an issue. And you never know who's going to bring it up. Generally speaking, there's, like, this cheap client base that'll try and get one over on you. Like, I did four doors on a... <laughs> I had this busted-ass uh, Yukon and pulled it in, the whole thing sounded like it was falling apart. It was terrible. Pulled it in, did four doors on it. Like you go to adjust the, uh, adjust the light switch on it, the headlights, like turn them off and the whole uh, turn knob fell inside the uh, dashboard. Like it was already just like completely loose and you're just like, what the fuck is wrong with this? Um, but I was in a less desirable area, let's say. <laughs> I did the job, and it's, and then the, uh, the customer took it. They went out on the road, turned around immediately, came back in, and started yelling at the owner about the suspension of the car. They're like, what did you do? The whole suspension is broken. It's like, wow. <laughs> You're just, some people are just trying to get one over on you, so they'll, they'll get some work done. And then um, literally try and get you to pay for a brand new car because you touched their car, so you owe them, right? It's rare, but it does happen. I've been, I've noticed the more expensive you go, the less of that you have to ever deal with. Have you ever had a customer look at you funny because of tinting out of your home garage? I have some people not want me to tint uh, because of their not want me to tint their windows because of it. Um, I haven't actually talked to somebody because I'm so transparent about everything going on here. I basically advertise that it's out of my home garage. Like I have lots of pictures you can look through, you can see the space. So you know what you're getting into. When you Google it, when you see it on maps, it's really, really clear. So that right there, is gonna weed out anybody that doesn't wanna come here. And I 100% recognize that. And if I'm being an honest customer, like myself, like if I was looking around for a tint shop and I saw this setup, I would be a little, little leery about coming here as well, because it's weird. Like there's nothing about tinting from home for a customer and driving up that for most people, it's just out of the ordinary. 
there's like some sketchiness about it. There's some like, oh, why is he doing it? Like, why doesn't he have a nice shop? Why doesn't he have this? Why doesn't he have this? Um, there's no waiting area, so it's inconvenient in that regard. They have to drop off their cars. And granted, a lot of people will um, anyways, but there's just some things that are just not as desirable about a home studio. So then I have to take it upon myself to try to make this place look better. So, painted the whole thing, put some banners up, tried to make my rolls look good. Still working on this, but the lighting, the pictures, the media side that I do, the added race deck flooring that I'm putting in here, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to make this place look way better than a home garage. It's not gonna be for everybody, but it'll hopefully be enough for most people. But I don't know. I think anybody else with a, with a home garage that, that are tinning the same way should do something similar. Try to set it up in a way that's gonna look 10 times more professional. Do I have a business license for home or mobile? Um, yeah, for the mobile side of things. Still working on this though. It's a little bit of a, uh, eh. so we'll see. Probably not, but I don't intend on being here for good long. I'm gonna move to a different. My goal is to get a house on my own property. Oh, this is sticking. There we go. My goal is to get a house on my own property where I don't have to worry about it. So we're starting here and we're working up. But I'm not looking, <laughs> I'm honestly not looking to tint four or five cars out of here a day. I'm really just looking to do a handful. I mean, and this is a, this is a $400 job. So how many of those do you really need to do in a day? <laughs> Should you save the release liner? Um, no, not really. It's up to you. It usually just gets confusing. Unless you have a good organization system. And, like, because of the doors, you're not going to be cutting them off of the patterns. Off the liner patterns. Not really. Especially the top edges. So, I just discard everything and cut it fresh on every car. Been loving Glass Aid. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Already used one roll. Yeah, I go through it relatively quick too. Um, hopefully, it literally just went out of stock um, again, which is really disconcerting. Like the or the the run that I've been trying to get since uh, January hasn't been 100% filled still. So plowed through their inventory and then, I don't know, they said they were supposed to get um, the whole logs in June, no, in April, in the end of April. And then they just told me, looks like it's been delayed till mid, mid May. So I'm dealing with that shit again. That is fucking crazy though. I was getting like six orders a day. The, the support for it has been awesome. You guys have been great. What do I prep? Windshields and back glasses? Um, I use dry shrink prep right now on the glass, on the exterior with glass aid. And then 
On the inside, we'll go over that. Uh, now I'm using clay bars. On the back glass, I don't use the scrub pad, but on the windshield, I will. I have some, like, I have some shitty looking rolls that I'm gonna add to the website in the next day or so. So it'll be back in stock in like a shitty discounted roll run because in the bulk rolls, like I'll get 200 rolls in a box and uh, some of those rolls will look like dog shit. They're, they're still 100% functional, but they don't look clean. So I'm just gonna add them to the site on discount. Um, I probably have like 20, 20 of those types of rolls right now. So I don't know. I was like, I save those for myself more often than not. But then I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, you know, people would probably pick these up if I was just really clear that it doesn't look like all the other ones. Um, this is, uh, uh, this is from Lowe's. I'm running through this roll. It's been pretty good, but these panels are probably the slickest that I've had so far. So it's not a hundred percent sticking. Um, that's been my general experience with stickers anyways, on like the switches and stuff, but it's, uh, it's carpet cover and it's made to be clean release. So you can stick it. it it's like the exact same stuff that they use at, uh, um, like car dealerships and stuff like that, body shops, when they're trying to um, protect all the paint and stuff like that during delivery or when they're repainting a car and stuff like that, they don't wanna scuff the plastics and stuff. So I got a big roll of it and I just pull off pieces for the doors. It's not something that's very economical to do for mobile because I don't have a place to unroll it very easily. But in this, in this place, it's nice to just pull a sheet off of the wall and then layer it on the door panel. It was one of those sore thumb things that I always wanted to take care of. But there's like too many little things in the way from being able to do that with five or six cars in a day. Do I use glass aid uh, to, cut a, to cut a pattern out? Um, yeah. Usually, I'll put a light on the outside to brighten up the glass aid a little bit if I have to. So like on this 5%, it's gonna be a little dark for me to see the glass aid underneath. So um, I'll use a, like a stick light and I'll shine it on the outside. Helps a lot. So the white color is really like, it helps to see underneath, but it, that's not the solution. If it was only to see um, you could just get pin scraping. So it's a good mix of both. You can see and you can cut on top of it. And like, you know, when you get a fucking XT, uh, XTS or a CT6 or an Audi or BMW or whatever you get, you don't have to worry about fucking scratching the window if you're gonna cut on it. Was it the customer? Looks great. Thanks a bunch. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Hell yeah. Looks great. Thanks a bunch. I have three guys at work to refer to you. That's awesome. Thank you. Watch it on Facebook. I'll put the link on the on the Facebook. Um, so if you if you feel like hanging out on the, the on my YouTube broadcast too. That's, those are the, the people that I'm talking to right now. <laughs> I'm going to drop that in chat really quick. Sometimes people think I'm crazy. Um, let's see. Let's pull the, let's pull share. Control C. And let's organize this. Just in case there was any confusion. Control V. Oh, did this not copy? Share. Oh, 
There we go. Yay! Uh -huh, uh -huh. I threw some Avery NR 20% on my windshield. I really love the color and how it makes things look. The darkness is nice too. Damn, you're a little dark on that one. I wouldn't, I would not go quite that dark on my own, but yeah, it's cool. I can appreciate the coolness. What is good about carbon film and how do you sell it? That's a great question. Um, I try to present the customers with all the options and let them make their own decisions. So most people that deal with customers just over the phone, it's really hard to explain what you're doing, but you could do that in person. So one thing that you can do is at least make them aware that you have some different films and give them either links to the films or links to material about the film so they can understand it rather than just like a quick speech where they're not sure if what you're selling them is, is really worth the money. So we had this one scheduled a handful of weeks out actually. Send them some information, then we scheduled a day. Um, so shoot, probably like I was talking to this customer probably for the past three weeks or so. It's been a little bit. Um, and then showed him the differences between the two, like just in the, in the early messages. And uh, he actually was just interested in the carbon from the beginning as soon as I brought it up. So that was cool. I just, I don't know. I, I don't have the perfect technique. Or I'm just trying to cut this. this. We're getting halfway through this roll, and it's being a butt. Jesus. Okay. The beginning of this roll, this is a 200 foot roll, the beginning of it came off a lot easier, but the tighter it's rolled, the harder it is to pull. That's what we learn as we actually use stuff. And it's much easier to cut at the top. So I don't know, I was just presenting as much material um, and some brief explanations about them right in the beginning. And it was pretty set on doing the carbon initially. So just, I think more often than not, people don't give customers necessarily the time or a good explanation of the differences right off the bat. So I'm still working on the way that I want to present it and the different explanations and stuff like that, figuring out what just kind of works best. And then let them decide if they want to do it or not. So between live streams and videos, that's a, I found that's a really good way for me to convey things to people. Home garage tinters for the win. Um, oh, sorry, I'm listening to the chat too. Yeah, man, we're, we're, I don't know. I'm trying to change perception on tinting from home. How long to not roll down the window? Um, we leave them up for about two, three days and when it's warmer. So it shouldn't take much longer than that. I mean, you'll see me roll them down immediately to touch something up, so it's 100% safe to do. I'll tell people about two to three days um, when it's warmer, and then uh, usually a full week, five days to a full week in the winter. Try and press out as much water as you can to speed up the process. If they accidentally roll them down, it's not gonna kill the job. You just really want them to keep an eye out for like the moisture in between the film and the glass. And if it looks like that's all gone, then you're 100% safe. But it's not gonna mess anything up if you, if you do it or not. Just don't like push, 
push on the foam as it's drying out. Like don't push the, like if you see a little bubble, don't like try and push it out or anything like that. I'll start to smear the glue. Oh, you just, oh, I gotta, I gotta read that one out loud. That was a really nice comment. Thanks, man. These back doors, come on. Get this right up there. Nice. I do if somebody rolled down a window before recommended I would yell and I would scream no I'd go <laughs> I've done it too so I when I was first tinting um, I used to be really really uh, strict on that and like we had a couple customers come back that like you know, I'd pay attention to when they got their car done, or they came back a week later, um, or like within the next couple of days and the window was peeling, and I'd be like, see, see, they rolled it down too quickly. This was when I was young, younger and dumb, dumber. Um, but my dad would always say, just redo it. And I, I would get super frustrated because it's like, it's not fair. But when you grow up a little bit, you realize like, oh, hey, accidents happen. I did my own car. <laughs> I retinted I retinted the front doors on my own car. And then I went to a McDonald's and, uh, and immediately rolled my windows down right after I tinted it. And I had this realization moment like, oh, I'm just like, I should know better. And I've been so strict about it. <laughs> so if, if accidents happen, just fucking take care of it. Give them guidelines because the effort to redo that one window, like sure, you gotta maybe scrape some glue off and you have some film and it takes some time, but it's, look, it's not the end of the world and not everybody's doing it. So just be a good business and just redo it <laughs> if something were to happen. But if you have a good installation, um, nothing should happen, even if you rolled them down right away. So like if I have to touch up a little spot somewhere on this window, I can roll it down or I should be able to roll it down immediately. This one should be done. Let's check it over. There was a comment from the customer that I wanted to read really quick. It was really nice. What's up, Jaybird? Welcome. How long does it take you to tent without a live stream? Oh, <laughs> usually about an hour and a half if I speed through it. Okay, so. This is, this is what I want to say really quick. Uh, I did a little research on dyed carbon and ceramic and the pros uh, to go with carbon just made common sense, match knowledge. Matt's knowledge was right on um, the difference, or sorry, Matt's knowledge was right on tint. Um, didn't force the most expensive tint on me, which I really appreciate. Yeah, you, that, like, that was directly from the customer. So showed him the options, 
let him make his own decision. He did some research on his own, which is great. There, there's, there's some awesome information out there and most people um, that are just looking for tint aren't necessarily, you know, they don't know there's any differences um, between them. But people, you know, when you got a car like this, I would hope that you do a little bit of research. So that's exactly what he did. Saw what was recommended and then went with carbon. So yeah, I don't, I hate like push selling. Like have you ever gone in a dealership or a furniture store and you got people hounding you and shit like that? It's like, you should be happy to just do the job for whatever your pricing is, even if it's the base film. Not everybody's going to get the best of the best, but they still want to, they still want you to do their car. So you should be happy with that. But we're doing a carbon job here, which is fantastic. Is carbon 300 a car? Yep. Yep. Starting at 300. I usually have a lot of struggles getting the air out. Yeah, that's going to be, that's why I use a little bit more soap in my solution. And you never go over a dry spot. So when you're squeezing out a window, um, just squeegee where it's wet and then try and keep it all that way and then worry about the bottom. And don't ever try to squeegee air through a spot that you've always sque squeegeed. Try and sweep it all together and out one wet side of the window or else you'll start seeing air streaks. That glass is squeaky clean. Oh yeah, that's how we do it here. Put some extra time into making sure things are 100. Okay. So we have the back glass and the quarters. We, we are going to be using the, or we are going to be doing the windshield on stream as well. So we're going to have to flip the car around. but we will. Can you double tint a window to make it darker? Yes. Yes, you could, but tint warranties technically don't cover that, but you shouldn't have a problem in most cases. Um, but the, what the issue really is that you would have to take care of is Let's say a client already had their car tinted and just want to put a layer over that. Well, you don't know what's underneath it. And if a window peels or bubbles or fades or whatever, then you, you don't have the film to double tint the window anymore. So you'd have to single tint it at that point or try and use two of your own. So it creates more work. So that's why most of the time it, it it's a good idea to just avoid the warranty and just, or just recommend removing it and installing it all with just one film. But you know, I've, I've done it for people that just like, nah, I don't care. Just, just make it a little darker. Whatever happens, I'll be fine with. And it's like, okay, cool. No problem. I just got to make sure my own ass is covered on that one. Don't make any promises you can't keep. When, <clears throat> when tinning my own car, I always get fingers popping up in the inside, even though I shrink on the outside. Well, biggest reason for that is you're not shrinking it enough or you're not pressing your film out evenly. Usually it's not shrinking it quite enough. It could be a mix of the two. Just more practice. If you're, okay, so what I would suggest where you can go from here is try shrinking it a little bit more than you are and see what happens. If that fixes your problem, then there you go. But 
fingers only pop up when the film hasn't, isn't, like, the, the film is flat and the glass is curved. So fingers only pop up when there's a, a discrepancy there where, where the film um, can't all lay down. So that's why you still get fingers. This is such a flat back window. Do I still use Helios? Uh, no. No, it was a, it's a good ceramic and carbon film, but like that was, was using it when there really weren't any more options. Um, as far as carbons go, they all had some low angle haze and that was just you know, waiting for the technology to get better. And for the most part, I didn't have much of an issue, but the biggest issue for me was the places that I was tinting for wouldn't even try and sell it. They wouldn't talk to the customers about it. So it was just dead weight in my car. So I got so used to installing just regular NR that I stopped paying attention to most carbon and ceramic altogether. So when I opened up this place, this is the only place that I'm doing carbon and ceramic jobs. So you can be damn sure I'm gonna start looking into all my options now on what's changed, what's new. And Geo made some recent advancements in, in carbon. So I was really interested in seeing where where carbon has come from and where it is now. So, what you, what you find is also, the more you dig into manufacturers and stuff, there's a lot of people that are all carrying similar stuff because there's only so many manufacturers. Geo has been one of those companies that is always been ahead of the game. And I know this from experience. They're the first company I ever carried a, a ceramic. Their, their older ceramic and carbon was, uh, uh, sorry, what was it called? Um, Dark Matter. I actually carried that. Such a cool name. But that was like years ago at my, uh, at my dad's shop. So you can see, I can, I can somewhat see glass aid underneath it, but I still, even with some bright lights above it on limo, I don't know. Some people say they can see it. I still need a light for limo. Gonna try pink turbos to clean. My question is how? Cause like, so, a. Uh, Pink, t oh, 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 sorry. I'm thinking the little chiselers. No, that makes more sense. Sorry, I was just getting confused. The most popular pink tool is like either the tri-edge or the uh, little chiseler. And I was like, wait, little chiseler, what? No, no, you make, you make sense. Glass aid plug, I gotta try some. <laughs> well, you'll be happy to know that it's completely out of stock, so. <laughs> Whatever plug there was, it's completely useless. I'm gonna try adding some of the shitty rolls back to the site. Um, the uh, I have I have some like I have about 20 shitty rolls um, that I'm gonna mark on discount. Um, it's it rolls I never wanted to send to people because you look at them and they're like ugh. But if I sold them just as like hey these are 100% fine. They just look a little goofy. Like there's just dirt from when they got cut down. 
I don't know, somebody wasn't being careful. So like this part of it, when you, when you like set it down on a dirty surface or whatever, like yeah, they, some of them look like garbage. So I didn't want to send those out. I like him looking super clean. Waiting on my shank for you to come in the mail. Well, it should be on the way. Um, the, 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 let's see, I put out 16. <laughs> I put out like 12 to 15 orders on, uh, on Monday. So uh, there's two, there were two different shipping options. USPS priority and USPS first class. So first class always takes a little bit longer if that's the case. Plus shipping has already been impacted with Corona. Like, I mean, even trying to get something off of Amazon takes you sometimes a good week to two weeks sometimes now. So I did what I could, bro. We good on this? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're perfect. Save me some. Yeah, man, I can send you some. I would rather send you the clean ones. Unfortunately, they're coming in May, like mid-May, I think. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Don't shake me, shank me in prison. I'm out on Corona release. <laughs> what? You got some tint jokes. All right, uh, let's see these quarters. Make sure. Make sure everything's okay. I wonder if we should have a break, a little stream break in between the windshield. Oh, okay, hang on one second. I gotta text my wife. Whoa! Ooh, Dan and Reyna zooming in. Did you hear that sound? That was fucking sweet. Daniel with a $15 super chat. Bro, welcome back. Thank you for that. I wanted to wake you up, but, but noticed. I'm checking with my wife. Hang on, sorry, I'm checking some stuff. Ignore me, <laughs> even though it's on stream. It's this with the, with the GoPro, so nice. What is my main platform? Oh, somebody on Twitch. Uh, yeah, YouTube. YouTube's my main platform. I restream to both Facebook and Twitch. Um, I don't like, I, like, I love some Twitch features and the, the community that's on there, but I, I've been on YouTube forever, so I like to just keep things here. It's too confusing for my audience to go to Twitch right now. But I get chat from everywhere. Yeah, I see you spike my interest in POV streaming. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, uh, I uh, do like this camera and then wireless uh, back to the computer so we can do the, do the car. And then the headphones are literally so I can hear all the crazy people in chat talking to me um, and I can answer questions while I'm working. It, it can, it can get, get a rather confusing. <laughs> Matt, I sent you a message on your personal Facebook about a guy wanting a windshield in your area, sent him to you. Oh, thanks, man. I haven't got uh, an inquiry about just a windshield yet, but I appreciate the referral. That's awesome. Did you try Armorland films? No, no, I haven't tried them. You made that how to IRL stream on YouTube. Nice vid. How to set up POV stream with a GoPro. Yeah. Thanks, man. I'm glad you saw it. Yeah. Um, I'll take this off for a minute. I got this. Oh, GoPro marks. 
Believe it or not, this is a comfy head strap, but ooh. <laughs> Glad you liked the video. Yeah, I, I was frustrated because I couldn't find anything about setting this up. And since I've made that video, if you look through the comments, there's a couple of other people that have ways that they are doing it too as well. But I couldn't find anybody talking about it. Um, I've always wanted to be able to work and live stream at the same time. And I tried setting up cameras and using a laptop and a um, bunch of stuff. And no matter what I did, it was, uh, it, it's like, it's not easy because it's weird. Like when you set up a camera, then you have to keep moving it around and shit like that. And I know the GoPro gets a little dizzying, um, but so, but for working, it's really the most practical. So use a GoPro, come back, talk to chat some. Um, I like, I like the in-between. And then I'm using literally the hot swap right now so I can change out the battery so I don't have to reset up the GoPro again. Where do you get your film? Uh, I get it direct from GeoShield. Some guys that make tutorials deserve some type of price. <laughs> I agree. I've been making uh, tint YouTube videos for a long time, and really all that's done is like grow the channel. Um, but you know, it's a it's a labor of love. So doing the um, doing the video on the GoPro stuff, it's like I've learned so much from other people too, um, and you know, like uh, different creators on how to live stream and good practices and overlays and shit like that. I've learned, I, I learned a ton from people. So it was my way of trying to give back to that community too. I appreciate that. As, as somebody on Twitch, um, there's uh, like, I feel like Twitch, the Twitch community understands this a lot more because everybody on Twitch is looking into live streaming on some level, but on YouTube, it's, it's still pretty foreign. But yeah, I could, I could talk about live streaming so much. I love watching Devin Nash's channel. It's, it's a big, big help. Your Twitch viewers are growing. Yeah. Oh my God. We got another person on Twitch. What the hell? How many people we got? We got four people on Twitch right now. Dude, that's crazy. Twitch is a hard platform to just grow. I'm not putting any effort into growing Twitch. Most of my audience is on YouTube and Facebook. Twitch, Twitch has been like little. Guys, that'll mean I qualify for affiliate if I, if I keep up four, four people for long enough. Twitch army. Oh, damn. I, pogged. <laughs> okay. So I know there's going to be a little bit of a disconnect here between my uh, YouTube audience and the Twitch people right now, but fucking pot. Oh man. There's so many more emotes on Twitch, dude. If I could, I would love to add tint emojis to, uh, to Twitch, but I don't think I'm ever going to sign up as an affiliate. Um, I'll grow on Twitch, but I won't use any of their affiliate features. Cause I cannot, I don't want to be exclusive to Twitch ever. Like that's just shooting myself in the foot. Yeah. So on my discord, I have, I added some tint emojis. <laughs> I wish I could do them on YouTube. I wish there were some other things that I could add. Uh, Twitch community is better in their own way. Like here. Okay. So here's the fucking difference. Sorry. Sorry to the customer. He said, take as long as I want to, but I could go on and on about this. So Twitch chat is like, Fucking pog champ, pog champ, uh, ah, fucking crazy, like zoomers and shit. It, but it, they're a lot of fun. It's 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 a super fun crowd. On YouTube, it's like, well, hello, hi, how are you? That's really cool. I would like to know how to do this thing. It's like a much more grown up uh, audience. Oh, I got fucking now just strictly <laughs> here, here. I'm gonna drop this in. Uh, 
in YouTube. If any of you guys in YouTube want to watch me on Twitch and understand some of the uh, some of the chat, it's not happening a whole lot. YouTube or sorry, Twitch TV slash Tint Stuff. So if you guys are are confused, HTTP colon slash slash Twitch TV slash Tint Stuff. All right. Oh no, I forgot HTTP colon slash slash Twitch. Here I go with my fucking boomer typing. I know I got it wrong. Oh, you got that one wrong. I, I, I typed wrong too. I'm gonna lose my whole YouTube audience. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash tin stuff. There we go. So that's a link. If anybody, if anybody on YouTube wants to check me out on Twitch, it's literally the same stream. You're not gonna learn anything different. Um, but the, if you want to understand the type of people that are on Twitch, it's, it's, it's a whole different crowd. It's great. <laughs> um, if anybody watches on, uh, on Twitch, whoa, hell yeah. Dana Reyna with a $10 super chat. Much appreciated, bro. How have you been doing? You've been knocking out some ceramics this week? Mostly responses to other questions. My Oh, that's an interesting one. My driver's window makes a noise when it goes up and down. Is there a teeny piece dragging against the seal? Um, if it's, if you hear a noise right when you roll your window down at the very beginning, it could be. But if it's like the whole way down, no, no. Chances are it could be like a little piece of anything like sand or whatever in between the felt or the rubber seal and that window as it goes up and down. So it could be any of those. Yeah, doing some ceramics, that's awesome. All right, so we're gonna continue on this. Got Twitch chat. Got Twitch chat distracting me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put on this GoPro. We're gonna, we're gonna do a back window and some quarters. So let's go. Three, two, go. Three, two, one. Boom. We're mobile. It's so funny. I don't I don't expect to grow on on Twitch much at all. What was that? I will bring it by whenever you have a moment. Oh shit, you're the Audi A6. I'm sorry, I didn't even recognize you. Yeah, bring it by. I'll check it out. Um, hmm, let's see. Uh, tomorrow. Bring it, you, we can set up a time. You can bring it by tomorrow. If something's got to be redone, don't worry. I got you, bro. It should be fine, but if there's something catching at the beginning, that's, that's my bad. That shouldn't happen. But I got you. I will 100% take care of that. I don't like any of that shit happening. I think the uh, the scary part about Twitch chat though is that when somebody drops some emojis, the whole Microsoft Sam thing likes to read the actual text of the emoji. So it's literally telling me PogChamp. So I don't know what to do about that. I don't know if I can disable Twitch chat on my headset in any way. <laughs> Maybe I can figure out a way to disable emojis, but Twitch is like emoji text, but Twitch is emojis. Big oof. How do you get rid of bubbles? Uh, by never having them in the first place. Bubbles are something that don't go away. You have to take care of them beforehand or not have dirt. Don't disable us. <laughs> uh, what is it? Cars in the auto shop. I don't think redone, but I will reach out when I pick it up. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry, bro. Big oof. Twitch chat says big oof. <laughs> I don't think there's a community that will make me laugh harder, though, than fucking Twitch chat.
people are gonna, oh fuck. Do you know what I really realize now? I, if I fuck up a car, I'm gonna end up in LSF. That's, that's gonna be the real oof. I don't wanna end up in LSF over fucking a customer's car or something like that. God damn it, what am I doing? I pretty much watch Devin Nash exclusively on Twitch. I'm sub to Harris Heller and another guy, uh, Demon Machine, who is also like a automotive streamer. Um, but I take, I've watched some Twitch streamers. I'm just not that into watching game streamers, but I really, really respect what they do and the way that they get their communities involved. So I want to take, like, I, I always look for little things that I can try and pick up um, that I can implement here on my own stream. So, of course, binge watched a ton of Harris Heller when I was trying to understand more about overlays and stuff like that. So big fan of that stream as well. And the whole mentality about growing your audience and... Um, Twitch is a non-discoverable platform. <laughs> I found that out when, uh, when I first made YouTube videos. YouTube is, YouTube's very fair. You know, for as much shit as they get about the things that they do, they're extremely fair on views and stuff like that. What I like about live streaming though, is I can kind of settle down a little bit, not always try and chase views, but interact with the community. It's great. I just didn't want to wall myself off in only Twitch. Because I'm, I'm very unsure about where that platform is going, but the community is fucking hilarious. But what's up with the what's up with like the mobile experience on Twitch? Like I watch on my phone, it's not that bad, but like if you're not a big streamer, you don't have transcoding. So I stream at 1080 and I can't adjust that for Twitch. So sometimes you get a lot of buffering on that kind of stuff. It's really annoying. I'm checking my Twitch numbers now. Ooh, five. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, going by what I've seen, though, the five is actually halfway decent. <laughs> nice, you are live here also. At least not going to miss the stream. Just came here from a live Facebook session. That's why I'm streaming in 720. Yeah. But, if see, I can't stream in 720... Um, YouTube hands tra handles transcoding so much better. But, like, the app is also stupid frustrating. So when I'm trying to... When I'm trying to, like, stream... Um, like, I can't adjust 1080... Well, I mean, I could adjust it down to 720, but YouTube handles transcoding so much better and gives everybody an option. But Twitch is like, sorry, you got to be an affiliate for that shit. Ugh. Twitch has a bunch of a bunch of issues, a bunch of like core issues. It's a great platform and a great community, but they have a bunch of core issues that I don't know if they're ever going to fix. Like if the viewer experience is somewhat shitty already for new people, then Sorry. I'll just go to the platform that's more discoverable. <laughs> more discoverable and a uh, little bit of... There's no big white towel. I know what's in here. Yeah, there it is. More discoverable. Better app experience. Background streaming if you want. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to get too far into it, I guess. I watch on Twitch, somebody on YouTube, 
I watch on Twitch on my Apple TV and Xbox, but I go there for specific things. I wouldn't think to go search Twitch for automotive info. Yeah, that's a huge one. Um, that's, that's like, yeah, Twitch isn't really somewhere you go for, for a stream like mine either. Whenever you want to learn something, you go on YouTube. So it makes more sense that I think it will forever, YouTube will forever be more endemic uh, to what I do. Um, but there's that, um, you know, Twitch is trying to make some ground. They're owned by Amazon. Um, they're going to want to try and take their live streaming territory back for sure. So they got some work to do. But they're cool. I, 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 the community is great, though. You can't argue with that. Oh, we need our sprayer. Our pog sprayer. All right. So let's get back to learning some shit, right? Been distracted too much. This is a very long deck lid. Like you could basically sleep on this thing. If this was, if this was the eighties, you'd see kids sitting back here. Holy shit. So what we're going to do is fucking reach as far as we can with some longer tools. Um, we need a clay bar too, though. So we're going to grab that. Do you charge for removal? Uh, yeah, for sure. You're going to spend, if you're doing removals, you're going to spend more time doing a removal than you will installing the film. It's more labor. It's hard to make that point clear. So some people will charge by the hour and some people will just flat rate it. Um, I typically will just stick to like a higher flat rate for removals. Um, and then cross my fingers. Sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't, but you never know until you get started. Jesus. There we go. We got new clay. Fresh for the Cadillac. So what we're doing here is we're taking a clay bar and we're going over the defroster lines a little bit. This is an, again, I like to say this, this is a newer thing that I've been doing. And even though this is a very new Cadillac, like you see that? Ew, gross. How much? Um, in my area, I'll charge about 150 for like the sides in the back. If it's old purple tint, I would try to charge more. But most of the time, people are looking to get it retinted, so you have a little bit more flexibility there. So that's that's completely up to you. Um, as I was starting out, I did the full removals for a hundred bucks, but that's because like they added the full car with the windshield. So we were doing a lot. $325 for removal? God damn. That is a good removal price. <laughs> here, I don't know. Removals ha aren't as bad here on average, and they're not as common. So, but when you're in, if you're in a hot state, that's the, uh, that's the disclaimer here. When you're in a state where the film just bakes all day, you absolutely need to adjust um, if it's gonna take you two, 
two plus hours for like a removal. Yeah, some people just price themselves out of even doing removals. Because like, why? Like it's, you honestly, you kind of do removals more as a courtesy to a customer than anything. Because they're just very time consuming. But, <laughs> I get it. Don't want to be bothered with it, right? Can factory tint be removed? No, factory is, factory is uh, in the glass. So they just, it's a color thing. It never changes, never bubbles, fades, peels or anything because they just dye the glass. <laughs> yeah, Dan, Dan, it was like F you. You should have come to me in the first place, right? <laughs> But when you, when you get to a point where like your, uh, your, your time is worth a lot of money, right? You start to see the things that you could do in between. So, you know, yeah, it's a 160 bucks for removal, but if you're pushing off $400 worth of work, it's not worth it. So, you try and be as accommodating as possible, but you gotta do what also makes sense for the business. Looking pretty good on this one. If you look at it, you can do two to three cars in the time it takes you to do one removal. So there's really no money in removals. 100% agree. people are less and less patient um, and if you can't do their car within two days they're gone oh bro 100% um, but I think that was a case for a long time I don't think it's anything new window tint for a lot of people is very impulsive so some people fucking get their check for the week and then they're just like oh I need tent little busted ass car will be falling apart rather than getting it fixed nope they want window tent because <laughs> fuck it why not right um, those customers for the most part are not worth the time because they're not interested in you as a service they just want the end product and they want it done now. So you need to figure out how to advertise to a particular client base. And that's usually being a little bit more expensive and actually explaining your services rather than just price competing. And I've noticed it's, it's really hard to do that over the phone. I get a lot of just blanket inquiries. Like, oh, I'm looking to get my tint done. 
They haven't looked into your business. They haven't looked into your company. They don't give a fuck about you. And that's fine. There's places that'll tint that way. I don't want to tint that way. I don't know if I can spend all day in here with Twitch chat and tint a Cadillac. My next appointment is two o'clock. So I blocked off all fucking day for this thing just because I want to have a good ass time. I don't want to do five cars today. Order updates never got with tracking and confirmation. Oh, I can give you tracking and confirmation. Uh, what's your email? I'll look it up. Or your name. They get excited when I sell ceramic over the phone. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough thing to do, too. It is, you're right, it is easier, much easier in person. It's a lot to take in. So, like, you either have that particular type of person that you can make the time and have a conversation with. Um, but you're like, hi, I'm interested in getting tint. Okay, cool. Here, let me tell you the 60 options that I have. Like, even though you only have three different types of films, but you have percentages, you have warranty information, you have the time, you have the windows, you have pricing. Um, you know, are they interested in doing the windshield, front doors? You know, there's a million little things that need to be explained. So it's kind of a lot. So I, I've tried to take the stance where I don't, like I'll bring it up to them. Um, and on Facebook Messenger, it's been much easier to just like, these are the different films, here's a video, and like some more information about what I do. I don't need to talk to you about the film differences unless you want to know about it until you really get here and you've already gone through it. So if you've taken the time to look through it, gone through it, like most of that's like, yeah, this was all the material. Oh yeah, yeah I looked at that. And then, then we can talk about it in person. We're on a, we're, um, what am I trying to say? Yeah, we're, we're just, we're trying to make it simple. It's like a barber. Oh yeah, it's like a good ass barber, right? One that can talk to like fucking anybody and just like makes you feel comfortable and shit like that. That, that's what you want. And I'll be honest, I'm not the best at casual conversation with people that I'm not familiar with. So it's a learning experience for me too. But what I've noticed right off the bat that really helps is here's some things that you can digest in your own time rather than, hey, look at my films. Uh, I got this. Blah, 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 blah. It's like it's too much. It's way fucking overload. You understand it because you live it. For some people, they have no idea that ceramic is even a thing. And like, what the fuck? What does that mean? Is it good? <laughs> Who is that? Daniel Reyna with a $2 super chat. I'm not El Cheapo. I'm El Bueno Tint Shop. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Yeah, so, okay, so I did, I did catch it in the headset, but I, I forgot how to repeat it. Um, so actually one of my, one of my previous customers is hanging out in the chat right now. He says business is business. And again, unless the person is getting an install and potentially a problem coming to you for tents and other vehicles purchases for the foreseeable future. Um, yeah, that one, I think. Oh, Matt did my car perfect. I have no reason to even urge to look at prices or info period. If you need tent or if someone asked me, Matt is my guy. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Thank you. And that, that right there is fucking, that means the world. Like, it's such a crazy thing too. Like, 
I wouldn't necessarily have thought a customer after the fact of getting their car tinted would then hang out in the in the stream again. But holy shit, we could have like just <laughs> a whole bunch of previous customers hang out. And with that, we better be damn sure whatever we're installing and whatever we're doing is top notch here or else all the customers are going to fucking be ragging on me on my YouTube channel, in Twitch chat, like this could be a huge meme. <laughs> Referrals are the best advertisement. Yeah, especially with Tint. And I think when you get your foot in the door by charging uh, accordingly for what you're doing a little bit more than just, you know, hey, I'm new, I'm gonna, you know, stick to some cheap prices to try and jump up business that might actually be not so great for you because you might just be drumming up a lot of cheap business and a lot of cheap referrals. Nice videos, been watching your videos for a while, got a tent business too. Dude, that's awesome, thank you. Gotta say, it's pretty fucking encouraging to see some, some messages off of Twitch, though. And I could be wrong. Maybe it won't be all pog champs. Or maybe when you say that, it becomes all pog champs, right? I, and to ban, oh, fuck. I could ban, I could have a bot that bans emotes, but goddamn, I love the emotes. Emotes are great. <laughs> there we go with the pog champs and champs. Well, <laughs> uh, it's so funny too because, okay, this is, I shouldn't be saying this because this is just inviting it. So when anybody says pog champ in Twitch chat, not only do I know that they said it, but it, it doesn't just say it like emote or something like that. It literally tells me on my headset, PogChamp, PogChamp, PogChamp. Every fucking one of them. So it'll make me laugh and then it'll make me insane. And then we'll ban everybody. Whatever you tell Twitch chat to not do, they will. I know. Main cam. I know. I, I know. But it, it's just that, like, compulsion in me to just, like, not only... Uh, i got to say how funny it is in my headset, too. You can set bot to limit it. Ooh! You! How do we fucking gift you a sub? Oh, I don't have subs. God damn it. I would gift you a sub in a heartbeat for that. You can set a bot to limit the emotes. So we could have one emote per thing, um, so it wouldn't be overwhelming, but you still get to like, you get to very carefully plan out your, your emote. That's cool, I like that. You, sir, can now be an administrator of all the things. <laughs> Thank you. See? And then sometimes good things, when you, when, you, when you share too much information, sometimes good things come back to you and you don't even realize it. Pretty sure Nightbot cam? Awesome. I got a little speck here. We're going to touch this up. We're off a of GoPro. So we're, we're pretty much done at this point with the full car, but we got to do the windshield. Here in Tijuana, there are 13 shops side by side in a two block radius. If they are complaining about, I send them there. No way. Holy shit. All right, in YouTube chat, fucking Dana Reyna says there's 13 shops right around where he's, where he's located. And my boy is doing ceramic jobs. So he's got 13 competitors near him and he's managed to to do better. 
in his own right. That, that is the difference. Because you see 13 people and you're like, oh, I gotta be just like them. No, you don't. Why? Let all the idiots run in a circle with their head cut off and argue about price and all that shit. That's not what, I, I'd quit if that's what I had to do all day. Fuck that. When you're doing jobs for like a hundred bucks, it isn't, I've noticed, it doesn't really matter that much how many competitors you have. Location can somewhat play a factor, but I've seen people in pretty rural areas do very well for themselves. So I don't, there's, there's rough rules to tinting and all this, but there's people every day that are pushing the norm and doing better for themselves. And it's really encouraging. Your business can be whatever you make it to be. That's awesome. That's what, that's what I want for everybody. It's like, I, I, you know, we're all just trying to make a living as best as we can. At the end of the day, that's why we're all tinting. It's our job. We love, we love doing what we do, but we also need it to make a lot of sense for us as a business. So you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. And when you always cheapen your work, you always got to work a lot harder and then it sours the whole thing. What's up, late to the show? Well, welcome. We are wrapping up the sides and the back on this Cadillac here, but we still have to do the windshield. The people that charge too cheap do bad work and wreck it for everyone else. That's somewhat, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they necessarily wreck it um, for everybody else, but what they, it could be so much better. So when, when you have a bunch of people look at shops like that, it gives you an opportunity to stand out because you all of a sudden don't handle things the same way that they're doing them. They're usually very quick with customers, pricing, and then they're on to the next place. I went to a shop that was doing $100 tint jobs and they used the shittiest tint ever. I wouldn't even stick to the windows. Yeah, I've seen that too. Funny thing is I saw Cheap Shops the other day. She had four cars inside working on one outside. Oh, wait, what? They had four cars and they were working on one of them outside? Oh, my mug. Let's put that back together. Some people just want the price, not the quality. Yeah, and that's fine. Honestly, for those people that want to handle that, fucking go for it. Working way harder than you have to. It's funny, we're actually at the... Uh, Two and a half hour mark, which is, if you look at all the timestamps, that's, that's usually where I land on all these full cards. As soon as I'm wrapping up the end of it, going back to the stream, two and a half hours, I'm like pretty spot on here with a two and a half hour live stream. Um, but we're going to do the windshield, so this is going to have to go on. I just got to check with the wife first, make sure uh, she doesn't need food. Cool. What are you putting on the windscreen? We're doing 35. Want to get some stuff from your page? I need those yellow shanks, but need to complete that 50 bucks for free shipping. And squeegees are sold out. Ooh, really? Squeegees are sold out? Oh boy. Ooh, I gotta check that. Yeah, uh, the, I know the glass aid is. Um, 
50, yeah, 50 bucks is the best I could do on shipping. Unfortunately, USPS doesn't really give me much of a discount. <laughs> you think the gas cap on the car is open? Yeah, it is. Now it's closed. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, hmm. Let me walk around here. I'm gonna decide what I wanna do. Pretty sure I wanna flip it. I don't necessarily wanna end the stream, but we might end it and flip it around and then, like I just gotta make sure everything's cool on the home front. Damn, she looks good. Awesome, it's really, really good. Good deal. How dark can you go on the windscreen in your state? Technically, uh, nothing on the windscreen without a doctor's note. So it's up to the customer what, what they want to do. It was pretty funny though. I had a lot of customers, um, like, or they, so they put the state law back in the news because the governor was trying to change it or somebody was trying to change it. Um, but it wasn't going to be anything notable, but it all of a sudden got windshields on people's minds. And I've never done more windshields than I've done in the past year, just because it got brought up in the news. The law didn't even change. It's just the, it's the exact same as it always was, but people weren't clear on it and they think now it's legal, but you still explain it. Okay, cool. This looks rad. Um, all right. I got to take off my headset and I got to flip this around. Um, what am I doing? Yeah. Uh, on the main cam and we'll flip this. My mic will reach, so no issues there. Okay, so we're gonna take probably about another hour at the most on this windshield. So that shouldn't be too bad. Y'all wanna see something fun? Hey Google, open the studio. Oh shit! I love that, that's always, makes me smile. Oh no! I don't want to get demonetized. <laughs> you guys should still be able to hear me. This mic has like a 300 foot distance. <laughs> Fucking demonetized by radio. That would suck. All right, let's put this down. We gotta move this little Mazda. Make sure that we're good. Oh yeah, we're good. We're gonna leave this a little bit of an angle. It's a long boy. So we're gonna get out, we're gonna check it. I don't think we're all the way in. Ooh, we're close. Make sure we got clearance on the front. Yep. We're good. We got a little bit more we can move up. It'll give me good lighting. All right, we should be good there. Yeah, boy. Yeah, what is that sound? That's weird. Can't hear the radio. I shut it off pretty quick, but it definitely started. Let me make sure. I love your whole setup. Thanks. Not too shabby.
for uh, for a home garage, huh? Was it five on the back? Tint job looks awesome. Yeah, we're doing, we did five on the back and I got a sneak peek when I pulled this out. Dude, it looks fucking cool. Let's uh... uh what kind of pressure, pressure sprayer? Um, I'm using one from Tint Keg. Well, it's not it's not 100% true. The hose setup is from Tint Keg. Um, the actual tank is an old old older one from like 44. But they're all the corny kegs. They're all very similar in their own right, but if you're going to get a keg, I recommend going to Tint Keg. Okay, we got to shut this off before we die. <laughs> even though that's its own meme. All right, you guys ready for a windshield? He was, he was very sad about, about this guy right here. So he, he had his car so nice and clean, or so nice and clean, and then he brought it in. And he went out this morning and it had a, some bird shit on it. And I, I would totally wipe it off, but I don't want to like risk scratching paint or anything. I want to get an opinion on water bubbles after I get it tinted. So there's this period of time um, where it all the water will pull together. So usually after the first couple hours, it'll look the worst. Um, you can try and push a lot of water out, but that's usually on like warmer days. Um, it, there's always going to be moisture in between the film and the glass on some level and it needs time to dry. But the reason it'll look so bad when it first gets done or it could look bad is because it all pulls together that way. Water like adheres to itself. But if you give it a little bit of time, it'll dry out. The what would be really bad is if after you know three or four days you have white speckles all in your window tint. That is not that that's an air bubble at that point, not a water pocket. So be careful on that. If you have lots of little white speckles, then it, that's a bad job. But if it's just water pooling together and it's dark, um, there's, there's no issues with it. Everything should dry out. It's just going to take a little bit of time. If it's been over a week, then uh, even if it's not completely dried, I would personally, I would still redo the window. Everything should be dry in a week. If it takes longer than that, I mean, yeah, it should still go away. And sometimes it can be super minimal, but it's just aggravating. So. Definitely want to take care of it. And that's, that's like most of it. Most of it is taking care of your customer's concerns. Like, hey, I noticed this. Be nice explain the situation a little bit like hey these are the reasons why that's there but ultimately you don't want to put yourself or them in a position where you're just brushing them off you don't you never want to make a customer feel like you they're unappreciated unappreciated is what i would say So this, uh, this brow makes it really hard for me to see this. So no, glass aid is not a perfect solution all the time. I can see the rest of it just fine, but holy shit, it's super blue. Makes it hard to see that line.
<laughs> Thank you. It just kind of looked awful and kind of concerned me with every panel, but it said it go away. It didn't really explain what happened. You'll find that quite often. Dude, I, I couldn't even tell you how many places that I've tinted for that can't even take two fucking minutes to walk out and look at the car with a customer. They're at the counter. They can't be bothered to walk outside. It's like, bro, he just paid you however much to do that job. I understand you're busy, but that's what you get paid for. Fucking take care of them. I worked at one place. I worked at one place where the salespeople argued with one another over customers. Like, they didn't want to, oh, I got this customer. I don't want to talk to him. You talk to him. Oh, that's your customer? I'm not going to handle him. And whatever. So one guy would be on the phone, and the other guy would just be standing at the counter. And then a customer would walk in. And then the other sales guy, because he wasn't the first person to talk to that guy, it technically wasn't his job. So he didn't have to deal with that person at that point. So he would just say, oh, wait till he's off the phone. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're just making the whole entire establishment look like dog shit. But they don't care. There's so many people that just don't fucking care. It honestly blows my mind how there's <laughs> such bad customer service at places. And like, I'm trying to tint there, right? And these are my customers too. But... My job is to hang out in the back and tint the cars. And it's not that I wouldn't want to talk to the customers, is that literally I only, like the customers that I deal with, or that I'm mobile, so I'm running around to a bunch of different shops. So when I get there, they've already handled the customers in the ways that they've handled them. Oh, it's so frustrating. Guys, stay tuned. I got lots of stories that I forget about that I can bring up. I've been doing mobile and tinning at shops for 10 years. I don't know everything, but I know a lot about shitty customer service and I know a lot about just missed opportunities from people that can't put in two minutes to fucking explain their own business. So those of you, oops, I guess we don't want that bottle. Um, so those of you that are looking into getting your own tint businesses and care and are questioning, you know, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? You already got a leg up. Most people don't even think that far. I'm losing things. Where's my, it's probably here. Yeah, how oh, it was, it was buried. I was in the right place. I've thought about making a pool noodle light. I've seen a few people using them. Yeah, uh, so tint light. <laughs> it's actually, the pool noodle, noodle light is actually a branded thing on some level. Um, so if you search like knee roll, N-I-R-O-L-L -L or something, knee roll, knee roll. Um, you'll be able to find it. They're buying them off of a guy that makes them. So if you want to support him, um, that's a little info about it. I wasn't a huge fan of the pool noodles personally, but I think they got their use cases. I was, you know, running around from place to place, so... Running out of breath. Cool. So we gotta let that dry for a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can leave a link. Uh, Tintkeg.com. Like literally this, you can find it there. Um, when you're at a mobile service, how do you manage the temperature differences? Warm, cold, does that make problems, harder installs. Um, it can on some level, 
Um, on colder days, I'll use warm water just to like try and keep my hands warm. Um, oh, tintcake.com. <laughs> Sorry. Tint, there, we'll put it HTTP. That one. Um, can you, oh, what was it? And then like when it's really hot, add a little bit more, add, well, I add a little bit more soap. Oh, super chat from house one, two, three, five, three. Thanks for explaining the bubbles issue. Oh, you're welcome, man. No problem. I really appreciate the super chat. That's awesome. Um, but it's just tinning mobile is what you got to get used to is the environment is always going to change on you. But what you can always rely on is the cars are always cars, right? So you got to just pretend the world is just doesn't exist. So you have a mobile toolbox, you have your own little setup, your film, and just try and ignore everything else um, as best as you can. Um, but one thing that you're going to have to do if you're trying to handle mobile is you have to let them know you need, uh, you need at least some bare minimum conditions. So you need a space. You need them to keep wind down to a minimum. So if they have overhead ceiling fans over where you're tinting, they need to cut that shit out. Uh, if they're using air guns, you need to work with them maybe a little bit, but for the most part, they need to respect like, hey, you're trying to make a clean install. You can't be responsible if somebody uses an air gun and then all of a sudden you got all this shit in your windows. That's on you, right? It's like, it gets ridiculous. So I've worked with a bunch of different places. Some of them understand and they'll respect you and some of them just flat out won't. Don't fuck around with the places that don't care. You're wasting your time and trying to work with them as best you can. Just fucking get, just drop them, move on. They, they, if they can't be, uh, if they can't be bothered to be somewhat accommodating and like you got to respect they're trying to run a business too. So it's this, it's this working relationship where, okay, I can hold off for a minute, do what you got to do. It's just keep some communication. Like that's what I do at the glass shop. Um, whenever they're going to blow off a windshield, they're like, Hey, I'm going to do this. Is that okay? You're at a good spot. Yeah, sure. Go for it. I'll hang out for a minute. And then they do their thing and then I can continue, continue tinning. Right. Um, but, they, like if they don't have that kind of level of respect for what you're doing, then they're sure as hell not going to sell like you want them to sell. And they're sure as hell not going to make it worth your time. So you just need to drop them. The wind is also a stress. Uh, am freaking from, uh, am freaking from dust in other garages. Yeah. Wind is also a stress. Yep. I, it's a hard no on my part. You can put your foot down. Um, cause what are they going to do? They're, they, they promise the customer tent. You tell them, no, you need these particular type of conditions. You're not asking the world. You're asking for literally a spot to do the job and hey, some respect on vacuums, sweeping, air guns, just some of that. So body shops are usually a hard no because they're doing way too much stuff that's involved with dust. Detailing places, they have a lot of wind, um, but they generally can be okay. Um, and glass shops, glass shops are hit or miss, depends on the place. Uh, auto accessory places are also hit or miss, but you, when you start talking to them, you get a feel for not only the owners, but the, the employees that work there, they either somewhat can be respectful and care, or they just, they can't be fucked. And if they can't be fucked, then just leave that like, sorry, I can't do this job. And then they'll be like, Oh, ah, ah, ah. That's the only way sometimes they really understand. <laughs> How come you're dry shrinking the windscreen? Is it easier? Where did you get your dry shrink prep? You can get your dry shrink prep at uh, dry shrink prep com. This Patrick's little deal. You can go pick it up there. Um, yeah, we're uh, dry shrinking the windscreen. I do dry shrinking on everything. Um, well, except I guess except for the doors. Um, it's just faster, but you got to let it dry. Uh -huh. So it's usually good to prep it, but because I was pulling it around, I didn't want something already prepped on the windshield and pull it out and pull it back in. Visibility kind of sucks. What 
What's up? Finally cut the live stream. Is it almost over? No, we are just getting to this windshield, actually. I need some commands for the products. I know. I know I do. Uh -huh. Let's see, we need 35 on this windshield. So we're gonna do that. Um, I use a uh, restream, so their little ch chat command, um, they have them built in, but I got to remember what they are. <laughs> oh, and I don't think, I don't have a bot set up that handles it for me that hangs out in chat, so it's something that I always got to do. It's just, it's just another thing. So it gets pushed off. Like when I'm trying to think of whatever my commands were, I was like, oh fuck, did I abbreviate that like tint depot or exclamation mark depot? Or ex I should probably just do like letters instead of like words. But I'm still learning as we go. I should just hand it off to a Zoomer on Twitch and they can take care of it all for me. <laughs> Trust that they don't nuke my own channel. TD. Yeah, TD would be a good one. As far as I know, we're okay to do this shield right now. I'm a little leery on time. <laughs> I've bullshitted with Twitch chat too much. Or YouTube chat, all the chats. With all the chats. Or do I always have spots afterwards? Um, if there's speckles, like white speckles, it's just not a clean install. That comes down to your technique. So that's, that's like the cold hard truth about it. It's. The more you practice, the more you'll learn, and the more you understand where it's coming from. Usually it's just clunky installs when you fight with the film. You just gotta practice a lot. It's always when you're new. This is carbon. Yeah, we're doing carbon. He didn't go for ceramic. S sad people. <laughs> it's fine. It's. <laughs> I'm. I'm like. I was stoked. I was telling my wife. I was so happy this job was coming in today. I was just like, yeah. Had a regular day yesterday at at the glass shop that I tent for. And then it's like I get to go live tomorrow with a fucking awesome car, and we get to do the whole thing in carbon. I was just stoked. Oh, no worries. Um, you know, I probably don't have a good updated video um, on dust, dirt, and general environments when it comes to mobile. Because I often think some of those things are just common knowledge when they're really not. I don't want to make, like, there's just, like, you know, you really start to lose a little bit of touch when you've been tinning for a, for a while. There's things that you see that 
you forget what it's like to be 100% new. Um, but I do not mind any of the questions in chat. It's the best time to find out um, direct from me. Because I, I just, I don't have time to answer a lot of direct messages. It's just, <laughs> uh, it's never a quick thing in between. Oh man, there's so many things. Like now I, I have to talk to customers too, and those are messages that I can't put off, so. How is the clarity on ceramic? Um, it, so 100% depends on the company that you get it from. Um, generally speaking, most are pretty good um, as they're making their improvements. Um, but one big variant that you're going to find is some of them are carbon ceramics and some of them are ceramic dyed. So, of course, most, most of you know dyed carbon and ceramic. But ceramic itself only gets so dark without adding a color to it. So that's why you have, so you usually they'll just call it ceramic or they'll call it like a nano carbon ceramic or something like that. So you can, you can basically have two different ways of coloring the film. So when you add dye, dye is the more transparent uh, medium to work with. Um, but it's, it's not, doesn't add as much performance, but with the ceramic, it shouldn't need to. A carbon ceramic is going to use both carbon and ceramic, but the carbon can add the low angle haze. So when you're shopping around for a ceramic right now, I would more lean towards like a dyed ceramic. As, but definitely do some testing, like put a sample on your window or like if you're looking in, if you're a shop looking to pull it in for customers. Put it on your own, put a couple, and just do some good, good old fashioned comparisons. See which one looks better, see which one feels better. Because that's what your customers are gonna have to deal with. But I think the safer bet right now, as improvements are coming out, is generally just like a dyed ceramic. The Air 80 Lumar is grainy? Really? Oh, that's a bummer. Um, I actually installed Air 80 at one point. It looks a little blue. Well, it's definitely blue. I don't know why. A lot of companies seem to have like a light blue film. That's another one. Um, just try it for yourself and make, your, make a decision. You might be able to get um, like a, like I, <laughs> So I hear this argument from, from distributors. You might be able to get a sample, um, but I, you know, even if it's a paid sample, like you're getting good film, you can check it out for yourself. I never really had much of an issue with the really light ceramics, um, but I haven't installed them lately. This was when they were relatively new. So like I actually installed Lumar Air 80 for a little while. I liked it on my car, um, but it was like, it's so light, it's hard to even see. Couldn't remember anything about graininess, but again, it's been a little while since I've touched it. Do you have any tips on to prevent bubbles? <laughs> if we have, looks like we, we gotta make a YouTube video. Um, bubbles should never be an issue um, like it's never something that you should worry about on your own installs. You can see them before they leave. So they'll basically be like, you have water that pools in the glass and in the very beginning, it'll make it look a little bit distorted and you'll see a little bit of discoloration. You'll be able to see it. But what you really got to look for is speckles. 
So the speckles will fill with water and then they dry out. And when they dry out, then you're left with little white bubbles. But you can see if you have dirt before the job even leaves. So you can feel them with your finger, you can look, you can tell, like you can, you can see when you got dirt in between the film and the glass. So the only reason that, that it's mostly invisible after a new install is because it's full of water and that water fills all the little voids, the airspace. But once it dries out and you have airspace, those are the white bubbles and those look like garbage. Well, some people I read said at night the windshield air 80 is grainy or some sort of distortion. Could be a bunk roll, um, but if it's a pretty common complaint, then yeah, maybe it's not the greatest. Um, but, you know, take their opinions always with a grain of salt and make your own informed decision. I, what I wouldn't do is just go buy a roll, right? If you have that kind of concern and you want to get Lumar Air 80, I wouldn't just outright buy the full roll um, and then expect to have to deal with something like that on the back end. So what they should do is either send you a sample, but Lumar is one of those like stuck up asshole companies sometimes. <laughs> to be really blunt, I don't want to make it sound like Lumar's trash or anything. Um, but they have an arrogance about them, so they might not send you a sample. And if that's the case, I'd say fuck Lumar. <laughs> Just like that. Like, I don't deal with companies like that that can't be bothered to send samples. And they don't even need to... They couldn't, like... I don't know. I could go on and on. But, like, I don't even need the sample to be free. But like cut some down, let me try it out. I'm sure as hell not gonna buy, you know, a three, four, five hundred dollar roll just to try it out for myself. I wouldn't do that and I wouldn't expect any company to put you in that position. But I wouldn't expect it to be 100% free either. So we're touching up the edges. Anybody that's wondering why they get fingers after they shrink a full window and then install it, that could be one reason why. You touch them up afterwards. You cut the edges. You just make sure it all lays down nice and smooth. You still might get one or two little ones, but it shouldn't be bad. Clean it good, take out all the water, and bam, no speckles. <laughs> If only it were that easy. Damn, we are three hours into this. Holy shit. I think we're still okay. Curious, my windshield has a... Um... Wait. A strip for fifty um, is two thirty. This job is taking a bit longer. All right, we're still good. Oh, he's right in Facebook. I was just messaging you, man. Joe, um, right in the middle of this one. This one's taking a little bit longer. Um, and then I gotta go pick up some food. So 2.30, um, and then we should, be, we should be good for then. Um, just wanna double check with you though. I got the customer for my next appointment hanging out on Facebook, which is fucking cool. <laughs> I literally just messaged you.
Oh, we need this. All right, so let's cover up this dashboard. We don't want to screw this up. Put a towel down. This is this is one of those. I mean, all, all of them are cars that you won't want to fuck up. This one will give you a real bad day if you do. Nothing that stands out on this one though. Haven't heard. Not like uh, Chrysler. Chrysler, you know, Chargers, Challengers. Those are pretty widespread issues. But haven't had any, haven't had any issues on the Cadillacs, which is great. And we solved the ones that would happen on the, like the Rams, for instance. Can the rope peel the tent? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can shove a triangle card though, and kind of like wedge the the rope down and pull the rope out from underneath it. But some, some areas get pretty sticky. So you just gotta take your time, don't just rip the rope back out. And then there's some, I've actually just pulled the whole uh, rope out as I was installing it. So I did all the prep work, squeegeed it, and then pulled the rope and then installed it. Reason being is because how tight it was. Okay, so we need to Real quick, scrub this whole sucker down. So the difference between here and the back window is we don't have defrosters. A lot more is in the customer's line of sight. So being that we don't have defrosters, we can go ahead and scrub it pretty thoroughly. We got this gigantic cutout in the middle of the window too. I just cut around that entirely. You don't have to mess with the mirror. You don't have to remove it. You can just work around it. It'd be easier if it was out of the way. Sometimes there can be a lot of hardware that it's just not worth trying to maneuver off. Okay, cool. We're good for 2.30. Yeah, I just looked. It's 1 o'clock now. I'm like about half an hour behind of where I was hoping I would be. Still, still can't get shrinking down. Um, shrinking's always... Ooh, I should answer this one first. I've tinted two new fusions the last couple days and I had peanuts both in the back windows. Never had those cars to be known issues. I haven't had those problems either, so thanks for bringing it up. Um, turn on, but, but what I would immediately try on the next one is uh, turn on the defrosters before you go to install it. But yeah, it is unusual that it would happen particularly on that. 
Cause that'll make that'll make an install always take for fucking ever. But as far as shrinking goes, um, you just need a lot of practice. You can put like bounce dryer sheets down. Um, you can try dry shrink prep. Um, but really, you can also wet the window a little bit too, like especially towards the edges. That'll hold the film down in particular areas and allow you to shrink um all over the place so that can that can definitely help using a little bit of water some cars have overspray some cars aren't 100 percent clean so water is always like the my go-to for trying to get it to stick down immediately and like grab certain points okay we gotta move this what's a peanut <laughs> Um, so there's always, window tenders never found a good name for like air pockets and back windows. So they call them bananas or peanuts. <laughs> it's weird. It's literally like along the, along the back window, you have the defroster lines, they let air in. And then where you shrink, uh, where you shrink the film, it'll let air into those cavities and fill up and then like balloon up basically. I, I had a guy literally just, yeah, bananas. And I was like, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, those bananas on the back window. He was from Texas. They call them bananas down in Texas, or at least he did. And like around here, people are like, yeah, the peanuts. <laughs> it's like the difference between pop and soda. But for some reason it's fucking like fruit fruit and food. All right, we're gonna do this one more time. And then we're gonna reverse roll this one in. And I've been doing from the, sitting on the passenger side actually, for these last installs. I was nervous to do it that way, but I like it a lot. It's been really, really helpful doing it that way. Oh, fuck. I don't want to drag my towel. Yep, we're going to drag the towel. Come on. So awkward for this last little bit. All right, spray it, throw it in. Now we don't call it that in Texas. What do you call it in Texas? He called it that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm fuck. I'm from Michigan. That's where I've always been. Uh, and then let's do this one. So we're gonna be coming over from this side. So let's start on driver's side. Can you do a video on removing third brake lights? Um. If it's an Audi or a BMW, watch the previous live streams. Um, but I don't remove really any other brake lights. Maybe like a Crown Vic or something like that. Most brake lights don't have to be removed. I take the stance of remove as little as possible, keep everything OEM. Oh boy. You know, talking this much and doing a windshield. I need cardio. <laughs> Where did I buy my tent rope? Uh where did I buy that? I think Sun Distributing at the time I got it. Oh no, these ones were direct from Soak Shield themselves. They sent them over. And the the towel that says Tintless, that was actually my own uh, off of Teespring. So you have the if you're on YouTube in the app, 
it'll show like where you can buy shit off a of Teespring. Literally the printed towel. <laughs> I was hoping that was gonna be like the one crossover and people could like support the channel and like might wanna get a towel that way. <laughs> I never sold any. Merch, merch sales are non-existent for me. Yeah, we're reverse rolling, but I set it up a little bit different. I think I've never really seen anybody peel it this way, um, where they do like the top corner and then they lay it down. I'm just like a little extra cautious with the way that I do these. Oh shit, this one. So like my idea here is to basically fold the tint this way and then pick it up this way. And that way it doesn't have any backside exposure and it all lays down without having touched anything else. I just never like grabbing it and like picking the whole thing up with my hand and laying it back down like that. I always got dirt that way, but I also didn't, I also didn't like squeegee off the edges too. I've noticed that was another thing that really helped. So if I clean off the outside of the film before I roll it out, I get cleaner installs as well. Okay, now I need a lot of you to cross your, uh, your, ch your chat fingers because we're gonna install now so we can put a little bit more mist. We already cleaned it a bunch. Unroll half. Yeah, I unroll a little bit. And then I just kind of go for it. Always mess up if you roll like that. Uh, I, I used to. I, I had to practice this a lot. I actually made a video of like progress with this too. Of like, hey, I've been doing this for a little bit. But I'm super glad I took the time to learn this. I Don't get me wrong, I like carrying in the film. But on windshield, it's so easy to just get a small crease right in the driver's line of sight. And when I roll it, I, it's very rare. Everything's so much more controlled this way. You can take your time. And as crazy as it might sound, I'm so used to carrying in the film on the opposite side. So like I would carry this in on the driver's side. Um, I thought because of that, it'd be really awkward for me to try and install the film on the passenger side because it's such a reach. But it's actually not bad at all to get the film on the glass over on the driver's side from sitting on the passenger side. And then because you're unrolling in this direction, you're already sitting here so you can manage the film a lot better in my opinion. But we're still like, I think if I just went for it, I'd probably do a little bit better. Yeah, I've seen unrolling on the dash. It's just something I never uh, grew up with when I was learning how to tint. So I'm like slowly improving. Um, I just like keeping it on the glass right now. And you know, just like me doing from one side to the other, that could, that could definitely change 100%. But when it goes that way, that felt like it went pretty well. See that? See that little pinch right there? That's one of my issues with like a soak rope. So we're just gonna leave that for now. Same thing with that corner. Worry about, I worry about the rest of it. Sometimes you can jam them in and like make that space. Uh, in your state, they require safe uh, inspection stickers. Yeah, that's uh, not something we definitely, it's definitely not something we have here, but a post, Make a post about that in the groups. I'm actually not 100% sure. Um, some people will cut around it. Some people will laminate it. 
with like a piece of tint, with like a clear piece of tint. Um, and also the inspection stickers, like I've heard tinners like in New York, they have yearly inspections on their vehicles and they can't have any window tint, but there's still tint shops. And what most of them do is they'll do a full removal. The customer will go get their vehicle inspected and then they will come to get it tinted. Um, and then I'm assuming that they would just laminate the sticker into the film in some creative way. Not 100% on that part though. But we have a lovely tint stuff group on Facebook where there's lots of people answering questions all the time. You're in New York. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Yep, I've heard lots of shit about New York, but there's very successful places out there still. So don't be too discouraged. That to me would, would almost, would basically be, sound like a deal breaker, right? I mean, they don't allow anything other than 70%. So it's uh, like even over factory glass, New York laws fucking suck. Nothing, nothing darker than 70%. And then they have, yeah, yearly inspections. So literally, if you tint the back of a truck or SUV, you still can get in trouble for it. And then you can't have it when you go to get your shit inspected too, right? Because then you won't pass road approval. Whew. Man, I tell you, there's a lot of leaning on doing a windshield. We're almost done. We got that one corner to take care of. And then we have the cross our, cross our fingers that the inside is very, very, very clean. Thanks, guys. Don't, don't jinx me, though. Why is the bulldozer dirty yellow? Because it's a Chinese one. <laughs> Would you believe that I actually ch uh, test both of them just to see? So I was using these ones for a while to the point where I actually didn't realize how pristine white they're making the new bulldozers. So this is a Chinese variant of the bulldozer. Same thing for the side swipe. Does it work the same? Um, I think it does, but I've had some people show pictures of cracked ones. And so it, it's tough for me to say. I think the American one is probably a little bit better made. It definitely looks cleaner. Um, but I think the differences are not huge. And that's kind of the struggle. It's like Chinese and Indian manufacturing are fucking, they caught way up. And they caught way up to the point where it's a laughable difference on certain things. So then people have to innovate on better tools, but tinning doesn't fundamentally change. So it's hard to. People are still doing it, but it's definitely tricky. If somebody had a, a um, it's a little cheaper. I wouldn't say it's like drastically cheaper. I just wanted to do a, uh, like I, I want to make a video that highlights the differences between uh, some pretty well-known tools and some pretty well-known rip-offs of those tools. And the only way to really understand is to fucking use them. But... 
How long does the dry shrink prep last? Um, I don't know. To be honest, I'm not exactly like the fairest of, well, no, that's not true. Things have picked back up. So I tint full time a couple days a week and then I do like a couple of jobs a few more days a week right now. So it's like I'm not necessarily full time every day. Um, Patrick would be able to tell you a little bit more on how long it lasts for him. But I still have my OG one and I haven't had to change it yet. So I don't know, but I haven't used it on every car either. So a long time, <laughs> question mark. All right, let's get the towel. I'm feeling pretty good about this windshield. I'm gonna check it on the inside, but it looks pretty damn good. We just gotta hope there's no scratches, right? That's like the last thing. No scratches. Guys, I am tired. <laughs> Tell you, running a stream and doing a full car with the windshield, it's just the windshield part. When I'm answering a bunch of questions and talking to chat, that part I need. I need to go get some cardio. Oh, sorry. Uh, if somebody has a crack on their windshield, could you still tint it? Yeah, hundred percent. You can, you can, you can tint pretty much any windshield, even if it's, if it's got a crack or a chip. Um, but as long as the person that's getting it tinted understands that it might get worse. So if you have a crack that just runs to from here to here, it's not going to go anywhere else. You're completely fine. But you know, investing money into tinting that kind of sucks. So not everybody does it, but if you're getting like a strip too, like that's perfectly fine. You can, you can tint over the cracks. If, yeah, exactly. So just like somebody mentioned in chat, if somebody has a cracked windshield, they need to get it replaced. Um, yeah. And if somebody's got like, I a hundred percent agree with you, but the mentality is really funny, right? So if somebody's got a, uh, you know, fog lights hanging off of the car, homeboys will still roll in to get their shit tinted. <laughs> so go figure. Some people just have mixed priorities. Um, and sometimes the cracks might not even be that bad. Like, I'll be honest, I got a crack on my windshield right now. Um, it's been there for a little over a year. <laughs> as dumb as that sounds. But it's like at the bottom over here and it's like, fuck. I. I, when I had to explore brand new within the first two weeks, like our roads are so fucked, within the first two weeks, I had a chip in it. And eventually it grew a crack and I wanted to get out of winter before I replaced it. So I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do anything crazy. Ah, shit, we got something. I got a little, we got a little something, something. I don't know what that is. Is that a bug? I hope that's not a bug. See, you guys, this is where. Let me grab my sprayer. Not 100%. I don't know if that was like a bug or what. But we're gonna find out real quick. This is where windshields can get RIP real quick, but I think we're okay. Where did it go? Is it gone? Please tell me it's gone. Sorry, I'm just holding my breath right now because I. I think I had some, oh, it's gone. Fuck yeah. Oh, you guys, I just, I went quiet. I had to, I had to focus. Holy shit. So there was something, there was like a little, like a, I don't want to say like a smear, but it almost looked like, like a gnat. 
So I don't know if any of you've ever tinted a window and then had a little gnat fucking fly in your film and you see the little wings fucking splatter or whatever. It almost could have been something like that, but I wasn't sure. So it just like held my fucking breath on that. So we're going to squeegee this, but I wasn't even sure if I got out whatever it was. <laughs> it's just got water in my face. Oh, hell yeah. I don't know, whatever it was is gone. Whew, thank God. That's the real, like, it's a real RAP on a windshield, is when you go through the whole thing, you wipe it all down and then you go, Whew. Better than a hair? I got lucky. Even a hair sometimes is pretty straightforward. <sighs> Good. Okay. That's why tinning sucks sometimes. Okay. It's like a. Oh, yeah, you're not kidding. It's, it's like a million dollars to replace a windscreen nowadays. Even if insurance covers you, you have to go to the dealership and get it calibrated. Yeah, and I, so the glass shop that I tinted for, I didn't even realize that. Um, they like, they have some of the stuff that they can handle. But yeah, a lot of the times they'll replace a windshield and then they'll send the customer over to the dealership too. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, the, all the new cameras and stuff like that are making it even harder uh, to replace windshields than it used to be. It's like there's, you know, like how much is changing a windshield gonna change? Well, apparently a fucking lot. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was surprised. If you got nice cars, they need to be calibrated. Well shit, even some of that stuff's moving down to cheaper ones. We did 35 on the windshield. So we did five on everything else. And then deep breath, 35 on the windshield. And you can be sure this fucker looks so good. Success. What is that? Is that on the outside? Yeah, like this one. This one's got a little chip here. Now we take a breath, admire our work. Some BMWs can only be changed at the dealers. Fuck. And, you know, just think of all the issues that tinning had. I mean, and still could have, right? I mean, you half wonder if it's all going to disappear if customers move to like a subscription service on their cars. And, you know, down the road, they're all trying to automate driving too. So there's a good chance that nobody's really going to own their own cars t as well. <laughs> like owning a car eventually could be a thing of the past. So who knows? For now, it's a great career. <laughs> In 50 years, eh, who knows? No! That's why we have a cam. <laughs> Thanks everybody for notifying me in the chat. Ugh. Okay, I gotta pull the, the thing, the, the soak rope. 1.30, okay, perfect. I'm actually at a really, really good time. Hang on, let me pull this and then I gotta wrap up because we're pretty much done at this point. He is back. Whew. All right, one, one, one minute. What is that noise? My headset is like making a weird. 
wind noise. Huh. Sweet Jesus. I wonder if there's, hmm. Okay, should be all right. Essential work. No, 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 shut up. Damn car. Don't de demonetize me. We're gonna start it. We're gonna make sure everything's okay. I know we're a little distant. Sorry, lost my GoPro. Um, but everything, everything's good. Everything's done. <laughs> Hang on, just making sure we're all Gucci. Cool, screen's on. That works. CarPlay, yep. Looks like everything's all good. I'd walk around it with the GoPro, but we lost our connection, unfortunately. Open the garage. No, you need to breathe in that beautiful car. <laughs> all right. Cool. Looks like, uh, looks like we're done. Garage exhaust stinks. <laughs> I, I can tell a bunch of people that haven't worked around cars. <laughs> Dude, you couldn't get people to open garage doors in the winters here. You just get used to it. You don't like leave them running all the time, but they got catalytic converters. It's still like, eh, you probably shouldn't, but fuck dude. It just comes with the territory. But yeah, we are good. We're very good on this one. This thing looks fucking sweet. Look at that windshield. You guys see that? Can we, can we adjust focus? Ooh. Look at that. That looks fucking rad. Let's do the satellite camera real quick. Can I get, can I get a damn Daniel in the chat? <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, look at the reflections. That looks fucking cool. Um, main cam. We're gonna buy tools. Uh, actually, you can go to Tint Depot. Throw them some love. Here, drop a link in chat for that one. They're they're a proud supporter of this channel, so they help support and everything too. Um, my website, though, is um, mytintstuff.com. Glass Aid and just some basic stuff is on there. <laughs> Glad everybody likes this one. All right, my dudes. Um, I don't have a lot of time, uh, or I don't have really any time left, because um, I got to go run, get my wife some food. Um, I got a 2.30 coming in here, so that gives me a little bit of leeway to like get my shit together. I got a couple doors coming in, but that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and end things. Uh, next live stream actually might be tomorrow. So if we have that car show up tomorrow, I'm gonna check with the customer. Who fucking knows? Um, we'll see if we can wrangle something in. Um, not 100% on that. Um, but hopefully then we'll have something roll in for Saturday. I don't know, shouldn't be too long. People are starting to wake up and we're definitely getting some, uh, some business in here and a lot of inquiries. Um, so, what I will say real quick before we close is thank you so much to Tracy, Dan Arena, um, uh, House12353 for all the super chats. You guys are awesome. Um, really help support everything. Like we're gonna be improving the floors and shit like that. You guys all know that stuff. Um, but thank you guys so much um, for the super chats. And then also anybody else that was just hanging out in here um, this would not be as fun as it is without you guys hanging out in chat, talking, memeing it up on Twitch. That was a lot of fun too. So thanks everybody. Um, really appreciate all the love and I will see you in the next one.